Okay, thank you very much, uh, Puan Sharifa. Uh, thank you very much, um, Adek, uh, for inviting me to give this session. And I would like to wish a very warm welcome, a good morning to all our participants for this webinar this morning. Um, looking across the participants list, there are quite a number of you that I personally know uh, that we have become friends in University Malaya. Um, so very nice to see you here in this webinar. Uh, there are some uh, associate professors and professors that I recognize here as well. So it's really a great honor to uh, be giving this webinar uh, alongside all of you here. So thank you very much uh, for attending this webinar. Yeah? So we're going to be um, with each other for the next um, three hours uh, from 9 to 12. And I am really, really hoping that um, we can have this as a very interactive, um, engaging, as a very discussion-centered kind of webinar rather than um, a one-way uh, communication. I, I believe that for this particular topic, um, having an engaging Q&A uh, discussion uh, it will be much beneficial rather than uh, me being the sole information provider. So I would like to hear from all of you. Uh, feel free to ask any questions uh, that you have. Um, you can ask those questions in the chat box or uh, feel free to unmute the microphone and um, you can ask a question in between. Um, either way, it's totally fine. Um, I'm, I'm okay with any others. Huh? So please don't wait until the end. Um, if you have any questions uh, in between, there is something that captures your attention. And also most importantly, some of you also have your own um, research experiences uh, that you would like to share. Uh, feel free uh, to do so, yeah? Okay. Um, all right. So the topic of our webinar this morning is about uh, positioning your research uh, for impact. Um, so, uh, this morning, I will also have the company of a um, friend of mine from Emerald Publishing. Uh, so, Emerald is one of the uh, publishers uh, that has uh, very much uh, emphasized about what exactly it means by a research for impact. And some of my sharing this morning uh, will be centered about what are the, some of their initiatives and uh, what are some of their drives and how we could possibly collaborate with uh, Emerald Publishing itself um, to drive our impact initiatives uh, forward, okay? Um, so this will be more or less the outline of our uh, sharing this morning. So um, we're going to look at what is the rationale for research impact uh, what is exactly the definition, what is exactly the meaning of impact. Um, and this is quite important because uh, we, we, we are in a very KPI-driven system where uh, there seems to be added attention on quantity uh, and lesser attention on quality. Um, so we are living in this kind of uh, ecosystem where uh, quantity is given added appraisal. Uh, quality is given lesser appraisal to a certain extent. Um, so they, due to these um, uh, differences between priorities of quantity and quality, um, there seems to be also differences on what it means of research impact. Um, so there are many researchers who feels that research impact means this, uh, where else what the literature and what exactly it means by impact is actually another thing. Uh, so we will discuss this uh, this morning. Uh, we will also look at the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, you will be surprised that there are some researchers who are not aware of the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so we are going to look at the sustainable development goals and we can, we're can we going to try to discuss and see how you can tap into this sustainable development goals, which more or less is the center of any topic 
when we talk about research impact. And uh, we're going to look at um, what are some databases, what are some examples of uh, 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 references, referral uh, sites that we could go to uh, if we want to look at impact case studies. Uh, we are also going to look at the Myra uh, Community Engagement Impact. This one, uh, we cannot run away yeah? uh, because Myra is important for us, um, especially uh, in terms of uh, accreditation and assessment and, uh, uh, you know, is the quality control of the university itself. So uh, Myra, we cannot run away from Myra uh, because uh, being in Malaysia, we are very much... Uh, tied to Myra requirements. Uh, so we're going to look into how, uh, when we do research impact projects, um, we could meet uh, the requirements of Myra. So we need to know what are the requirements and more specifically, how we can meet these requirements and what it's meant as an excellent research impact. Uh, they have some ratings there and what it means as uh, not so impactful projects. Uh, so we will disclose, we will talk about this as we go along. Um, we are also going to look at this uh, very interesting uh, latest, uh, I, I was sorry, it's, I won't say that actually it's latest. It's been around for quite some time, especially in the 2000s. But this uh, form of um, research uh, the design seems to be quite the popular and impactful approach when it comes to research impact projects. So uh, it's called design and developmental research, the DDR approach. Um, so if you have not really heard about what is DDR, uh, we will discuss about this this morning. And uh, you know, I will uh, discuss and show you some examples of this as well. And uh, as part of this webinar, we're also going to look at some examples. And these examples predominantly comes from my research projects that I have done. Um, among the uh, in with UM and I will show you and discuss with you and also uh, let you know what are some of the tips and experience sharing that I have personally from these research impacts and I hope that you ask me uh, questions um, as well eh? especially concerning this uh, research impacts project so that uh, you know we can have a good discussion and it can help you in terms of your overall understanding because uh, this is an example actually comes towards the end of the webinar uh, to complement what uh, we have discussed for the whole morning. And also uh, together with me this morning, I have uh, Mr. William Lowe. Okay, he is from Emerald Publishing. And Mr. William Lowe will also be uh, talking about uh, what are the sort of uh, research impact initiatives from Emerald Publishing. So, uh, you can see that Mr. William Lowe has just uh, uh, turned on his camera here. <laughs> so I think Mr. William, would you like to say something to our audience uh, this morning? Uh, Mr. William, I think you're muted. You're muted. I'm muted. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you for reminding. <laughs> A very good morning to all, especially uh, Dr. Donny and also uh, ADEC committee. A very, very thank you. And I do appreciate uh, the invitations to, you know, just appear for a short moment of time and to actually share with uh, the audience today uh, from the publisher perspective, what does actually impact means and how can we actually improve um, our influence, you know, to, to get more impactful uh, research and how can we actually conduct um, and connect to more of the community and projects out there. With that, I'll pass that take to you, uh, Dr. Donny. The floor okay. is yours. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, um, <laughs> Mr. William is going to be with us this morning and uh, Mr. William is also going to share a little bit about what are the sort of research impact initiatives by Emerald Publishing and that will be towards the end. And um, I hope that you take advantage because uh, Mr. William is quite a uh, busy person and uh, for him to be joining us this morning <laughs> is a big pleasure uh, and he is directly from Emerald Publishing as well so uh, take advantage of this opportunity and uh, feel free to ask him uh, he will be showing you some impact initiatives um, examples from Emerald and uh, feel free to ask some questions from him okay uh, so I would like to start this activity this morning uh, by us uh, I, I just have about three questions uh, to throw and uh, to all of you. And we are going to use this application called Slido. 
um, Slido event. So if you could take your phone um, and scan this QR code, and uh, we are going to do this event. So uh, we have about three questions. I will flash the questions across the screen and you can answer those questions. Huh? So please scan this uh, QR code. Uh, use a QR code um, scanner uh, because there was one workshop when I went, when I used Slido, they actually used uh, My Sejatra. My, <laughs> My Sejatra, I think we're so used with My Sejatra using scanning. Uh, so this doesn't use My Sejatra. This use that normal uh, QR code scanning. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn on a Slido now. Okay, just give me a moment. Okay, so if those of you who have missed um, scanning it, you still have another chance. Okay, so here is question number one. Uh, if you have missed scanning the QR code, the QR code is here as well as the, the code is also here. Um, so here is question number one. I can see there's at least four uh, of our participants this morning is already online. So could you answer this question? I do research considering its impact. Okay, so I see that 57% uh, so far has answered always. 38% have answered sometimes. Okay, so always seems to be leading the way so far. So we have 14 responses so far, 15. So the number is slowly, slowly growing, yeah? Um, doctor? Yep. I've also shared the link in the chat ah. session. Okay, thank you. So those who... Yeah, thank you, Shariba. So those who are um, not able to scan the QR code, you also have the link um, in the chat. So you could click the link and also participate. Yeah. So we have about uh, 40 participants so far. Um, but the one that is on Slido, we only have uh, 17. Huh? So quite a number get to join in, get to click in. So I'm going to just give it a, a little bit more time uh, for this. So you could click the link, yeah? Okay, Yong, I see your answer in the chat. Could you put your answer in Slido as well? Click the link in the chat and you should be able to access. One one more minute. So I see that the answer always is uh, sixty three percent now. Sometimes is uh, thirty eight percent. Okay, so we have twenty four now. Huh? Twenty four who is join me in Slido. Okay. So thank you very much for this answer. So we can see that um, most of you are always having impact in your mind when you do research. So that is quite refreshing. And uh, some of us are, you know, sometimes, you know, so I think perhaps this group of uh, researchers who answered sometimes is uh, perhaps we look at what kind of research that we are doing and what specific kind of research, you know, so, and also the audiences and the groups that we are targeting. Huh? So that, that could come into consideration uh, when we are doing research as well. Okay, so thank you for this response. We are going to go to uh, question number two now. Okay, and let me go to question number two. Okay, so this will be question number two now. I am familiar with the sustainable development goals okay 
Okay, so I have seven so far um, with this uh, question. Okay, 10, 13, 16. Okay, so the numbers are rising. Okay, I am familiar with the sustainable development goals. 36% uh, somewhat familiar. Okay, we see there's some fluctuating answers here as we go along. So somewhat familiar seems to be leading uh, to a large extent. Now we are equal. Okay, those of you who have just joined, you have this link in the chat. Uh, you can click that link or you can scan the QR code here uh, and join this Q&A. Okay, so I think that we have saturated now. Uh, so we can see that uh, there is a small group of researchers who is not familiar at all on the sustainable development goals. Uh, there seems to be a tie in the results in terms of uh, very familiar with the sustainable development goals at, at 35% and somewhat familiar. Uh, I kind of know a little bit, uh, but what exactly is all about? Um, I, I'm not sure, but I kind of know a little bit, uh, which is somewhat familiar. Uh, to a large extent, uh, those who, you know, know quite a bit, you don't have to know exactly what it is, but, you know, you, you are aware about it, you know, uh, what is the um, year of inception, what is the purpose, and what goals that is specifically related to your research area to a large extent. And we can see that it's at least 33%. Uh, not familiar at all, you can see that it's 30%. So, uh, this earlier this morning, I did uh, inform that uh, there's quite a number of our researchers who are not really familiar with the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And as part of our discussion this morning, uh, we are going to look into this uh, because when we talk about impact, uh, this will be quite a crucial thing. It's a very important area uh, that we need to be familiar with and we need to be connected to it uh, if you are talking about impact because uh, impact here in relation to sustainable development goals, uh, this impact is on a global basis, right? So we want to impact on a global rather than just the, the local context. So if everyone were to work at some specific goals uh, that has been outlined. And yes, we are doing it in Malaysia, for example, but other people are also relating to the goal that you're doing. Uh, that is where global impact happens. Um, so we need to be familiar with this. Um, and it's okay if you're not familiar. Uh, we will look into this and see how we can tie this somehow um, to your impact initiatives. Okay, so this will be question number two. And now let's go to the last question for this morning. Uh, this will be question number three. What do you understand by research for impact? So for question number three, this requires you to do a little bit of uh, typing uh, when you will need to type uh, your answers here. Okay. So what do you understand by research for impact? Okay, so I see the first answer here. The quality of journal, okay. So there's no names here. So you are feel free to uh, answer it. Uh, there's no names given here. So feel free to just answer what, what do we understand by research impact. Okay, so we have about five, one, two, three. So research outcomes, quality, publication, and impact, research that brings good to society, research outcome benefits society, it's the provable change, okay? And then you have KPI, should be significant, the quality of journal, citation rate, research that 
can have a big effect for community and academia and also the government and research where it will give benefit to the people, meaningful research outcome, research findings that brings change, effect research beyond academia, something that brings positive impact to the community. Okay, so we have 14 responses so far. Direct, indirect, short-term, long-term, measurable benefits to society and industry. How the knowledge generated contributes to society and policy makers. Wow factor that will be beneficial to the public. Research that will bring development or changes to the society. Studies that have impact and benefits on the community. Research with positive change to the triple bottom line. Good, so society, environmental, and financial. And research output that valuable, that is valuable and transformative for the community, policy development, as well as accessible. Wow, fantastic answers, lah. <laughs> this morning. I think we have a very, very good audience this morning. Uh, you all are giving very, very good answers, very, very sharp answers here. Okay. Any other uh, suggestions? Yeah. So we have the, I think what is quite refreshing is uh, we can see that through these answers, uh, we can see that the, the crowd this morning seems to be uh, more or less uh, understanding about what exactly is meant by uh, research for impact. Okay, I'm going to give it another one more minute for uh, this before we, we wrap up. So I got 21. Okay, at this juncture, is there anyone who like to share verbally? What do you understand by research for impact? That means you could unmute your microphone and you could share uh, with the crowd. You know, whether it's right or wrong, that's, that's different. Uh, later, we will discuss about that. Any, any thoughts anyone would like to share? Because maybe you're struggling to put it into writing. Um, you would like to share it verbally, that's fine. None, yeah? Okay. So I think we have saturated at 21. Okay, now let me go back to the slides. Okay, so thank you everyone for participating in this short Q&A, yeah? Uh, so that I get a feel about the crowd uh, that we have this morning, uh, the, the participants uh, that we have this morning, so that I will know where to give uh, more emphasis and um, how to more or less um, structure our discussion for the rest of the webinar this uh, morning. So from your answers, especially uh, concerning uh, question number one, concerning uh, question number two, uh, concerning question number three. Yeah? So the question number one, for example, uh, you know, uh, we look at uh, some of your answers that you have given for question number one. Let me let me go back to sure, sharing the right screen. Okay. So if you go back to question number one, I do consider... I do research considering this impact. So it's quite refreshing to see that uh, quite a number of our researchers here that um, you do research um, in a large majority says that you always uh, do research considering its impact. And you know, some and some of us answered sometimes that's, that's totally fine. Now for question number two, we can see that uh, uh, there have been there's quite a large number of group here that is not familiar with sustainable development goals. 
some are somewhat familiar, some to a larger extent. And I think for question number three, which is quite important for this morning is, uh, what do we understand by research for impact? So generally from your answers this morning, uh, we could see that um, you have uh, an, uh, somehow a very good understanding about what it means by research for impact. So uh, you see in, 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 uh, in uh, environment where we have uh, a KPI driven environment where quantity is given more priority rather than quality or given added recognition to insert in certain circumstances in certain events uh, we could see that sometimes uh, the meaning of research for impact could be lost um, in this whole uh, red and uh, cat game chess and it also is like who publishes the most, who publishes the least, and you know the quantity over quality debate and all this. So in the whole midst of fulfilling this uh, KPI requirement, um, the definition and the understanding of research for impact can be diluted, uh, can be lost. So we can see that among the answers that you have given here, uh, generally, I can say 90% of these answers is very much related to what is meant by research for impact. Uh, but we can also see that there are some answers here that is not really uh, related to research for impact. Okay, so for example, we can see the last answer here, which is the quality of journal. Okay, uh, and then we can see, for example, another answer here. KPI seems a little bit general. Uh, maybe we need to explain it a little bit more uh, further here. And we can see that quality, publication, and impact for journals. So this goes hand in hand, two in one. We can also see citation rate. You know, so citation rate is also uh, known as research for impact by some of our participants. So uh, this is what it means that uh, we need to have really clear understanding what is exactly is meant by research for impact. So I'm going to share with you some of the... Uh, uh, what, it, what, we, what we call the definition and the meaning of uh, research for impact so that, you know, we get a really clear idea about what is meant by research for impact and uh, before we talk about what are the sort of strategies and initiatives that we have. Um, so for me personally, uh, when we talk about research for impact, um, it's about creating a value in society. So I particularly like this quote so much because... Yes, we are doing a lot of research. Uh, we need to do research, especially if we are working in a public university that is research-centered. Uh, so research should be part of the culture. Research should be part of the KPI. The research should be part about the way that we do things. It's not just teaching. Um, so we need to have teaching and research. But uh, for me personally, how do you convert this teaching and research into meaningful work? Uh, that specifically creates value in the society. You know, so yes, we are teaching. Yes, we are involving students. You know, yes, we are producing human resources for the future. Yes, that is well understood. But what's beyond that? What's beyond that? How can we create value in the society that this group of people's society that doesn't really benefit directly from our teaching. So how could we create value in this group of people? So this is what I particularly love about this quote by Charles Koch. It's about creating value uh, in the society. And when we talk about creating value in the society, I can go further and say that creating value uh, with the people that we are directly uh, in contact with and with the people that is externally outside of the university. So that is about creating value. And let's look at uh, what uh, David Phipps has said. Now, David Phipps is actually a very uh, good award-winning uh, researcher. Okay, And he is uh, the Assistant Vice President, uh, Research Strategy and Impact at York University in Canada. Okay, And David Phipps has recently, in uh, 2020, he has won two major awards uh, and one of it is on research impact and uh, second thing is about uh, research uh, administration and management in, in, in general and he is also the director of research impact uh, in Canada and let's see what he says here. I always say uh, researchers don't make products, industry does. 
they don't develop policy, government does. They don't deliver social services, the community does. So we need to demonstrate impact through the voices of those who are using the evidence. So this is quite important for us to see that uh, sometimes when you talk about research impact, some people say, uh, yeah, uh, is it about developing products? Uh, is it about uh, developing policies? Is it about you know just delivering some uh, social service uh, events or social service uh, uh, programs? No, it's, it's more than that. It's about uh, demonstrating impact to the voices of those who are using the evidence. So it's about what those people that is receiving at the receiving end of that impact has to say. How do they benefit from that? So in, in a nutshell, uh, Kips, uh, FIPS is actually talking about research that transforms lives and shapes futures. You know, so how does the research transform somebody's life, the community's life? Does it transform? Does it have uh, uh, an impact? Does it shape their futures in a different way? You know, so this is the kind of things that we are looking at. You know, so we want to look at impact through the voice of those who are receiving it, uh, not through us. So yes, we are the one who did the research and we are the one who did the project, but it's not about us communicating, uh, communicating the impact. It's about the people on the receiving end demonstrating and communicating and say, this is what I have received and how beneficial it is. You know, so the evidence comes from the community rather than the researcher. Now, if that is the one happens, uh, we can say that we have more or less successfully able to transform their lives and shape the future. And if you were to see that, that this is what FIPS has said about research impact, now, this is very much related to our university as well, uh, University Malaya. Anyone knows what is the uh, University Malaya's vision? What is the latest vision that we, you know, we have rebranded the mission and vision of the university. So what is the latest uh, vision of the university? Anyone knows? You can put it in the chat or you can unmute and share. <laughs> William said, let me Google. <laughs> yes, good. So, uh, Valerie, a global university impacting the world to become a global university impacting the world. Okay, good. I already have two answers. Yes, yes. Your answer is absolutely spot on. So, this is the latest vision of University Malaya, a global university impacting the world, right? So, here we can see that uh, wow, faster than I Google. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So here we can see that the vision of the university is very much aligned to research impact, right? So it's quite important that we need to know what is exactly meant by research impact because here the vision of the university is impacting the world, right? But when we talk about the word impact, are we talking about uh, journal ISI, Scopus, are we looking about Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4? Are we talking about the number of grants that we are receiving? Are we talking about uh, the, the KPI and the points that we are receiving? Right, It's more than that. It's more than that. So it's about creating value in the society. So our university vision is very much tied to research impact. Um, so we need to understand uh, what exactly is meant by research impact. Now, let me go further. This is going to be a bit challenging for all of you, but let's see what is your understanding and whether you could give me the answer. Uh, now, University Malaya also have a research tagline. Uh, a tagline. Anyone knows what is the University Malaya's research tagline? This is part of the University Transformation Plan, and this is part of the University Strategic Plan as well. So what is the University of Malaya's research technique? This is a little bit harder. <laughs> so maybe some of you are Googling, huh? maybe some of you are Googling and, and, and finding out.
And this research tagline is very much related to the vision that we have here, a global university impacting the world. Uh, serving the nation, impacting the world. Okay, thank you, Valerie. Any other responses? Research tagline of UM. And this research tagline uh, very much resonates with what is mean by this vision, a global university impacting the world. Ah, I have a long answer here. To be a leading university that actively contributes to the generation and enhancement of quality of life. Okay, thank you, uh, Valerie. Ah, yes, Faiz, okay. Unfortunately, it's a virtual webinar. Lah. If face-to-face, -face, then you would have got a prize, okay? <laughs> All right, so uh, what exactly it, it is the research tagline is this one. So uh, we have a new deputy vice chancellor in research and innovation and uh, Professor Dr. Shaliza. It's the new installed uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation. And we can see that uh, she has emphasized and she's talked about the research tagline. Now, the research tagline is about UM research, transforming knowledge, industries, and lives. So here we could see that when we talk about research impact, we are looking at three different areas. So we are not just looking at the knowledge that uh, we are giving to our students the knowledge that they are delivering on a daily and weekly basis and producing human resource for the future. It's beyond that. Yeah, we are looking at also impacting industries. We are also impacting lives. And we talk about industry and lives. This is the culture outside of the university. Now, this can be done within the university, but this is the culture outside of the university. So we are talking about industries, we're talking about lives. This is basically, we are talking about the community, right? So you can see that the research tagline is very much related to the vision. So when we talk about impact, we are talking about transforming. And when we talk about transforming, we are looking at three specific areas. We're looking at transforming knowledge, we're looking at transforming industries, and we are looking at transforming lives, right? But now, what exactly is meant by impact, right? So if you want to go and dive, oh, I think somebody is unmuted. Let me, I think, uh, Adek, Adek, maybe you can unmute. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, so what exactly is meant by impact? Yeah? So when we're going to go in and, and really dissect this really clearly so that, you know, we, we have a very clear understanding. So when we talk about impact, okay, and I have this nice sharing from uh, Julie Bailey, okay, and she is the uh, Director of Research Impact Development from University of Lincoln in the United Kingdom. And Julie says that impact is the provable benefits of research in the real world, okay? So it's some uh, substantiated some demonstrated effects of our research playing out in the social world. It's not measured things like citations and academic attentions. It's measured by changes, things we can see and feel or do, they, they big or small. So you can see that uh, in terms of the meaning and the definition of research impact, so those of us who, who thought earlier that, okay, research impact is about publishing in top tier journals. Research uh, impact is about Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Uh, research impacts is about uh, the top researchers in the world, being the top 2% researchers in the world uh, in terms of uh, citation counts and all this. No, no, no. Uh, so the actual definition and meaning of impact, okay, we are looking at something that you can see in terms of change and something that, and when we talk about that change is something that is big or small. So basically impact means that uh, something that we can demonstrate, okay, and something that we can see change in behavior, 
change in beliefs, uh, change in practices in the community. So when we do this kind of impact initiatives, okay, we are able to see these changes, changes in behavior, uh, changes in beliefs, and changes in practice. And when we are able to do that, means that this is what we say real change, real change in the real world. Okay. But when we talk about impact, there are many types of impact here. You know, so let's look at the next quotation here. So the real significance comes from making impact meaningful to you, meaningful to your partners, and meaningful to your research. So what exactly it means by this? You know, so first we talk about impact. And we talk about impact, we are talking about uh, demonstrator, uh, demonstra uh, something that you can demonstrate, something that is beneficial to the community, uh, to the uh, it creates value to the society, and in terms of uh, behaviors, in terms of beliefs, in terms of practices, we're talking about real change here. But now, when we talk about real significance and specifically making impact meaningful to you, your partners, and your research, so what does it mean? Basically, we are talking about the types, the different impacts that you could do. Uh, we have uh, impacts in terms of attitude, we have uh, impacts in terms of awareness, we have impact in terms of uh, economic impact, uh, social impact, we have policy, cultural and health. Uh, so these are the sort of impacts that uh, you could do in the society and how does these different kinds of impact relate to you? relate to you, relate to your research partners, your research team, and specifically, how does it relate to your research? So it's basically uh, uh, important to know that impact helps us to be focused on the overall purpose of the research rather than the process. You know, so sometimes we are so concerned about the process of research that we forgot or somehow we miss about uh, understanding what is the whole purpose of doing the research in the first place. So the idea of impact is to focus on the purpose rather than the process. So basically, to, to understand this clearly, uh, in a truer sense, impact means change. Uh, impact means change. So if you are doing a research, does it change the society? Does it provide value to the society and when we talk about change when we talk about beneficial we are talking about change in uh, behaviors we could talk about change in beliefs we can talk about change in practices so this is the kind of impact that we are looking at and also impact means that it is change okay so i'm going to stop here at the moment any questions so far that you all have on this so Lee Son says, it's my pleasure to be an UMR. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like that one, eh, Lee Son. I will say that uh, saya anak UM. I know sometimes in my Facebook, I put a hashtag, anak UM, okay, uh, a child of UM. Eh? So yeah, especially if you're an alumni, okay. So do you all have any questions so far? Any, any, anyone has any questions, any thoughts, especially if you want to share your thoughts on this, please go ahead. Nana? <laughs> okay, so never mind. All right. So now, uh, oops, what happened here? Okay, so now let's talk about research impact in terms of uh, the effects. What is the effects of research impact? Uh, in our discussion earlier, yeah, especially in question number three, you know, we talk about what you understand about research for impact. Some of you have answered change to the community, change to the society and all this here. Uh, but, you know, if you were to make it in a very simple term, we are talking about research beyond academia, uh, research beyond academia. So we are talking about specifically uh, when the knowledge generated by our research contributes and benefits and influences our society, influences our culture, influences our environment and influences our economy. So these are some areas of impacts. Uh, so you can impact a society, impact the culture, and sometimes it's not one, and sometimes it can impact two, three areas, four areas at one time. So this is just an example, right? Uh, but we are talking about the effect 
of the research that you're doing beyond academia. And when we talk beyond academia, we are talking about what kind of impact. So you have uh, what kind of impact and in what areas. So we're looking at impacting the society, impacting the culture, impacting the environment and the economy. And you can find this source here. Uh, this is also from the um, University of York. But now I will also like to provide to you, this is the definition of what we know about uh, research impact and what it means. But specifically, you see, in the midst of uh, applying for grants, um, especially concerning, uh, you want to apply for grants, especially concerning on impact initiatives. Uh, you want to demonstrate how could your research impact the society. Now, it's quite important we need to understand what does certain organizations' uh, impact vision is. What do they understand as, uh, sorry, not what do they understand, what do they champion, what do they a need or what is uh, their research statement in terms of research impact. So I'm going to give you some examples. So what we have here is from the U.S. National Institute of Health. So those of you are from the health, uh, you can see that, for example, if you want to look at research uh, impact in the U.S. context, we are looking at this, the likelihood for the project to exert a sustained powerful influence on the research fields involved. So here, whenever that we do a research impact initiative, it here it clearly says that there must be a sustainable element towards it. Means what? Uh, it's not a one go. It's like, it's not a touch and go. Um, you know, so in Malaysia, we are very familiar with touch and go. So the research should not be a touch and go. Touch and go such as uh, is a one time affair. I do a one time and then uh, whether it's sustainable or not in the near future is not my problem. I have done the, the research. So probably I've done a webinar, I've done a workshop, okay? And it's a one-time thing, it's a touch and go. But what is the effect on the long term? It, that means if you are not there in the long term, can that impact be sustained? Can that impact be there? So they are looking at sustainability, the community, can sustain that knowledge, uh, that, that, that benefit that you have transferred to the community, they could sustain it without you being there, without the university being there. Now, that is what is the meaning of sustainability. They are able to transfer that knowledge within themselves. So here, we are looking at sustainability aspect uh, when we are looking at the U.S. National Institute of Health. Now, another institute is called the U.S. National Science Foundation. Okay, and here they are talking about the potential. Okay, and we talk about the potential. They are specifically talking about the research, uh, the research that we are doing that benefits the society and contribute to the achievement of desired society outcome. So here uh, it's not uh, 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 what we are talking here in uh, National Institute of Health. We're talking about sustainability. But this one, we are talking specifically about the achievement of desired society outcome. So what exactly is desired by the society? What exactly is needed by the society? So we should be aware about what the, the sort of needs analysis, what are the sort of problem that is apparent in that society and what kind of achievement that we are going to strive in our research to solve to a certain extent that problem, uh, to solve to a certain extent that desired outcome of the society. So this will be from the U.S. National Science Foundation. Now, I want to switch the context from U.S. to another context in the U.K. So let's look at Research England. Research England. And Research England talks about an effect on change or benefit to the economy, society, culture, public policy or services help the environment or quality of life beyond academia. So I think Research England basically has uh, outlined it very specifically. When we're talking about research impact, what is the sort of impact they're looking at? We're looking at uh, change or benefit. Uh, so they've put all here. So it could be one or the other. Change or benefit to the economy, society, culture, public policy and services, health, environment, or quality of life beyond academia. So specifically, they have outlined here 
what is the scopes that they are looking at? So we talk about research impact. Is this the, the, the research that they're doing? Is it centered on this impact initiatives? Is it centered on what they require uh, or what they envision impact should be? So this is Research England. Now I'm going to bring something that is closer to Malaysia now and not, not very close, but uh, more or less it's, it's within our region. Okay, and this is Australia. So Australian Research Council uh, talks about the contribution that research makes to the economy, society, environment, or culture beyond the contribution to academic research. So you could see that uh, what is mentioned by Research England and what is mentioned by Australian Research Council is very, very much similar, uh, where they are looking at what kind of contribution, what kind of impact, impact to economy, society, uh, we're looking at environment, culture, and most importantly, contribution beyond academic research. So whenever that we pitch the research that we want to do, the projects that we want to do, it's quite important to emphasize about these areas. You know, so sometimes in, a, in uh, research presentations, we could see that the emphasis is about uh, uh, more on the academic side of things. So it's on the publication, uh, on the types of journal that we're going to publish, uh, the, the, the ranking of the journal and all this. So here we are talking about contribution to uh, beyond the academic research. So Australian Research Council says that it's beyond academic research. Research England talks about beyond academia. Here we are talking about society outcomes here. So we can see that in, 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 if you were to do an impact initiative, it has to be beyond what we already know and comfortable in academia. Okay, so this will be the four uh, areas. Huh? Some of us might be asking, uh, okay, la, you know, this is US, you know, England, Australia, but how about Malaysia? La? Uh, what does actually Myra wants? Uh, so does Myra have something, a uh, research impact statement like this? Uh, as what we have seen from US, Australia, England. I, I've tried to, uh, uh, you know, for me personally, I, I have not come across such a research statement. And um, in preparation of this also, I've, I've tried to put some added initiative to actually really try to find it. Uh, but um, I couldn't find any research statement that is connected to Myra. But nevertheless, uh, as part of the sharing this morning, I will show you what is the sort of expectations from Myra in, and in terms of their rating and in terms of um, how do they view uh, impact initiatives. So as part of this morning, let's do a little bit of uh, reflection. So I've shown you about what is impact, uh, what is research impact. We have also connected it to the context of where we are working now in the research university, University of Malaya, and what is University of Malaya's vision and what is the research tagline, you know? So now we are going to look at your reflection, right? Your reflection. So UM talks about uh, transforming knowledge, industries, and lives. And that is our research tagline. Uh, global university impacting the world. That will be the vision of the university. So I've also given you some statements about what it means by impact, what it means by research impact. Now, uh, and also I've given you some research statements about impact from the US, England, and Australia. Now you need to reflect where do you start? Where do you start? So as a, as a researcher, where do you start? So do you have something in mind? Uh, how does your research specifically connect to these impact statements? How does your research uh, specifically connect to the vision of the university and its research tagline? So here is where you need to reflect, okay? And is there any sharing? Anyone would like to share uh, about this? What is your reflection so far? Maybe I'll start the ball rolling for you, Dr. Donnie. Yes, Azar, please go ahead. <laughs> Azar here from ATEC and uh, from engineering. Um, when I started doing my research in UM as an academic, I have that impact clearly in front of me. That's why when I do things, I know it's going to be for commercialization or for 
in a community. But somehow, um, I, I'm not sure how much we are well equipped in terms of facilitation, in terms of skills, in terms of other things to bring it to the next level. Somehow we, 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 we try to do two in one, three in one. By doing that, we also get our paper publication. We also get our student graduates and things like that. But in order for us to get to the stage of commercialization, to get into the community as, as, a, as a business entity or as a well-known community service body, it's a different ball game. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to listening more advice from you, Dr. Donnie. Thank you. Thank you, Aza. Oh, you, I think, Aza, you have summarized uh, very, very well on the uh, challenge that is faced by um, the academics, um, especially uh, especially in a research-centered university where you need to balance between your KPI and uh, impact to the community. So thank you very much, um, Aza, and also sharing on that. I see there's a chat here. Impact can be subjective and difficult to measure. How to quantitate quantitate impact in the standardized objective approach? Thanks. Okay. Thank you, T, for uh, this uh, question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts? Okay, before I answer T's uh, question, any other thoughts on this? Any other sharing? Okay, let me help to guide and facilitate about your whole reflection. Yeah, so I'm going to do this very short activity here with all of you, right? So this is us as a researcher. Okay, this is us as a researcher. So you can see that uh, here I've, I, I've put some context of research. So some of us are very much in labs, okay? But uh, some of us are very much in, uh, spend most time in the classrooms, you know? And there are different, different ways that um, all of us conduct our research, okay? And now, us as a researcher, okay, you could reflect on these two questions. What could my research change? And whom could my research change? benefit okay so can you just reflect on these two questions first what could my research change and whom could my research benefit so can we frame your 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 research impact initiatives with these two questions okay and then we are going to arrive at how do i make this happen okay so do we just look at these two first okay t uh, for your question Okay, how to quantitate impact in a standard objective approach? I will show you uh, this approach later on. We were going to talk a little bit about this. It's called the DDR approach. Um, that is one of many other ways, uh, but one uh, approach that I have seen a tremendous impact. Uh, so we will, I will talk about that later. Okay. Okay, so anyone would like to share what could my research change and whom could my research benefit? So basically, we are talking about your ability um, to understand, appraise, and make decisions about how your research resonates with the outside world. Uh, so we are not just talking about research within academia. We are talking about how your research connects with the society, how your research provides value to the society. Okay, so anyone got a statement yet? You just, just share, it's okay. Eh? It's, it's <laughs> nothing right or wrong. You just share and, and uh, maybe you can put it in the chat also, it's fine. Um, what could my research change and whom could my research benefit? I mean, you don't have to write a very extensive, long, just a simple statement, uh, it's fine. Okay, so uh, maybe to help to facilitate, maybe you can put like this one, one, this is question number one. So the answer for number one and answer for number two. So you can put one, what's your answer? Two, what's your answer? So it's kind of understood. You're answering which question.
So let's look at uh, what could my research change. And whom could my research benefit? Okay, anyone would like to share? This requires some critical thinking. <laughs> Okay, so I see a first response here uh, by Azam. My research could change rehabilitation healthcare services in terms of technical provision. Oh, yes. Okay, and who benefits people with disabilities and their caregivers? Excellent. Excellent. So this is uh, a very good uh, uh, two statements to answer the two questions. Okay, how about anyone else would like to try? What could my research change? And who could benefit from my research? KK, you like to try as well, KK? Ah, okay. Okay, so William um, has just provided a response there to KK. So it is not just a challenge to researchers, but also to many institutions, okay? Impact is often viewed as intangible, hard to measure, and still work in progress. This so-called measurement could be intangible, could be a small measurement of provable change, and up to measurable contributions to SDG goals, okay? Sheena is also here. I think there's quite a number of our participants, okay? Anyone who could share something like what Aza has shared, so that we it, it in a way helps you in terms of scoping, uh, in terms of scoping your research impact initiatives. Dr. Yong is also here. Dr. Yong. Dr. Yong, you have anything in mind? Dr. Yong? I'm still thinking. <laughs> <laughs> still thinking. Okay, okay. No problem, no problem. <laughs> Sometimes it's not so easy, uh, sometimes. Uh. Yeah, okay, Punita, good. So my, oh, okay, Punita, yeah. Punita is also here. Punita is my PhD student. Wow. So thank you, Punita, yeah, also for joining this session. My research is on students' leadership in service learning. Okay, so uh, question number one, how undergraduates can enhance their leadership and life skills and can benefit the students' faculty in designing the course in future? Okay, so... Uh, here, uh, Punita, we need to uh, look into here, what could my research change? So basically, are we talking about enhancing students' leadership and life skills? So that could, uh, you could frame it that way. So rather than a question, uh, you can provide a statement. Okay, what could my research change? Uh, undergraduate students' leadership and life skills. Okay, and whom could my uh, research benefit? You can put there, for example, benefits the students and faculty, for example, or you want to put specifically benefits undergraduate students, okay, and their peers, for example. Uh, so that will be the kind of statements that we are looking to answer these two questions, okay? But thank you. Good, 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 uh, good sharing there.
Okay, so the rest of you are uh, uh, maybe thinking uh, some, some, sometimes to get an idea is not very easy. Uh, so uh, that will be my role this morning uh, to, to help you to give you some form of idea about uh, what kind of impact initiatives that we can do. Uh. Okay, but now mind, let's, let's keep this in mind. Let's keep this in mind, what you actually have in mind. Um, I see there's another response here uh, from Farah. Yeah? Farah. So for my research, it could change the conversion of unused satellite communication into radio telescope system in terms of technical instruments and who could benefit. Academicians who use radio telescope for astronomy, geodesy, and space observation, also the community to improve. Oh, fantastic. So this is a very, very good um, statement as well. Okay, so thank you, Farah, for sharing. So this is another excellent example uh, on uh, what could my research change and who could benefit. Huh? Okay. Hi, uh, Dr. Donny, can I share? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm from the public health, uh, on the health uh, side. Lah. Okay. So we... We do. We can do cross-sectional study, like finding out their their health behaviors, or we could do intervention studies uh, to teach them how to have uh, um, healthy behavior so that improve their health. So, um, no matter. I mean, it doesn't matter whether is this a cross-sectional survey. You want to find out how is their prevalence, uh, how is the prevalence of their disease, their their good practices, or you want to intervene. Uh, so the who could uh, my research benefit is definitely the respondents lah. But how do I make this happen that uh, it is uh, sustain sustainable? It is um, very challenging and it will take more time because even though you you provide an intervention right, so you have taught a small group of. Uh, respondents um, in, in something to, to improve their health, but to sustain that um, the effect of the intervention is uh, take a lot more work, lah, probably like training the trainers and uh, getting the community to, to buy in the program and so on. So I think the impact need a lot more time to, um, to make it sustainable and uh, that it gives a large impact or effect to the society. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prof Moy. But very nice to see you here as well, Prof Moy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this. Huh? Um, I think Prof Moy is also a very, very reputable researcher, especially in terms of the uh, current context, which is the pandemic, huh? uh, where her expertise is very, very much needed. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, this uh, controlling this pandemic. So thank you very much, uh, Prof Moy, yeah, for, for sharing that. Okay. As what Prof Moy, yeah, I think as what Prof Moy shares, yeah, sometimes uh, uh, change and impact uh, can take a lot of uh, initiative and can be difficult uh, in terms of sustaining it on a long term. Uh, so there could be phases involved. Um, there could be, uh, you know, uh, uh, change uh, which is long term especially in terms of intervention can be challenging as well right uh, but what is quite important you see uh, uh, in terms of research impact sometimes researchers we are very concerned about the uh, process of, of doing things you know, rather than the purpose of doing it so in terms of research impact the focus is actually on the purpose, not so much on the process. So what exactly that uh, we want to do, why we want to do, and how we could make it sustainable. But uh, we need to acknowledge that no project is ever perfect. Uh, there, there could be uh, no project is ever perfect in such a way that it's going to be, uh, you know, we, we cannot be 100% assured that it's going to be sustainable on the long term it could be sustainable in the immediate term you know so this is the kind of thing but the the whole point is is it sustainable can it be sustainable you know so that in the near future that when you are out of the picture can it be sustainable so this is the kind of thing that we are looking at research impact and in terms of, of sustainability is about the the community the the people outside that are receiving the benefits of this 
can they sustain it within themselves? Not sustain it in such a way that, okay, periodically, uh, uh, I'm going to come every three months, every two months and, and do something. No, that is not really what we call sustainable. The sustainable is basically they are able to make impact within their community, within themselves. Uh, so the, the, the initiatives can be sustained within themselves. Now, this is what we call uh, long-term sustainable impact, right? So uh, and for your research, yeah, sometimes this impact varies across uh, various research, but uh, the point here is, it does it have a sustainability feature inside? Uh, whether it's short-term or long-term, that is something that we need to think about. So preferably, it will be a long-term approach uh, because if you want to make your research ready, impactful one but how to make it a long term is okay like what prof moi have shared earlier yeah one of the best approaches you could be train the trainers uh, where you train the people within the community itself to make the change you know so that their knowledge is within themselves and they could replicate the knowledge duplicate the knowledge and share the uh, knowledge across within their own community so that will be another brilliant approach in terms of train the trainer okay um, dr Dan uh, donny Yes, yes, Sheena. Nice to see you here, Sheena. <laughs> Hi. Enjoying your talk very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sheena. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was I was thinking just now when you when you just suddenly called my name. Um, <laughs> could I just share? I, yeah, go I ahead. can't think of any new project, but could I just share our current project? It's Please. a an IIRG project on the Karinchi community in Malaysia and we are exploring their linguistic, cultural and religious practices which uh, may have been affected by the assimilation process because the Karinji community, they come from Jambi, Indonesia to uh, Malaysia. So okay. what we're doing is um, uh, looking at the linguistics aspects um, of their language and culture uh, these have not been explored before. So we're looking at kingship terms, um, the language, the cultural maintenance. We're looking at their adat and governance, uh, these kind of things. Also, their cultural heritage of their uh, Karinchi diaspora and um, Islamic practices as well among the community. So, yeah, we're looking at this, this whole lot of aspects in the community and um, for for impact, um, this would be helpful um, documentation itself for for the community and also people outside the community. So we, we are also yeah um, uh, documenting these in uh, books uh, uh, in a book uh, journal and also uh, conference and we, we do have uh, meetings with the community as well. Uh, to find out what their needs are, you know, things like that. Would that be impactful enough for, for that is, the yeah, yeah. That is, yeah, mm. that is excellent, excellent sharing, Dr. Sheena. So uh, I think that is one of the reasons why you got the IIRG grant, uh, because it seems to be impacting multiple areas, you know, and uh, we are looking specifically at uh, linguistic and culture. You're looking at yeah. um, the change in terms of linguistic and culture, but there seems to be impacting multiple areas. So um, let me, uh, so thank you for that sharing, uh, Dr. Thank Sheena. You, yeah. So the PI, yeah. The PI for this is uh, Prof. Jaria. So we have three sub programs under that. I'm a uh, co-researcher, one of the co-researchers. Wonderful, wonderful. Yep. Yeah. So it's very clear from your sharing uh, what exactly that you are trying to change. You're trying to change your linguistic and culture. And it's very clear from your sharing who is going to benefit from this whole uh, impact initiatives that you're doing, right? So, yeah. thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sheena, for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank nice you. to see you here as well. As well. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me let me try to uh, frame this in 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 another way. So, we are going to talk about the sustainable development goals now. Okay. So, when we talk about the sustainable development goals. Uh, here it's quite important that the impact initiatives that we are doing is linked to the sustainable development goals. So this is quite crucial because uh, through my observation and through my experience of doing uh, impact initiatives, uh, yeah, be it uh, IRG and any other uh, impactful 
impact resistive uh, grants, uh, this will be one of the core areas. Um, in fact, even for Malaysia, Myra, Myra also looks at SDG as one of the criteria. So it's quite important for us to be aware about what are the sort of SDG goals that is related to our area. So uh, first thing is to conceptualize about what is this SDG and how many goals. So we know that there are 17 goals here. So uh, if you're not aware about this uh, uh, previously, you can get a view of this now. So there are 17 SDGs here. Um, so this um, SDG goals was, concept, uh, was conceptualized, was formed at a UN uh, General Assembly in uh, November 2015. Okay, And it's called the um, sustainable development goals. So we have 17 goals to transform our world, right? Uh, and this sustainable development goals, okay, you can see that even the word of impact is that sustainable, okay? So it's not just uh, 17 goals, it's 17 goals that can be sustainable over time, okay? But how long is this sustainable goals? Uh, until what duration? Can anyone uh, share? What do you think is the uh, agenda for this? How long? How? What is the time frame that we are looking at? So now we are in 2022. Um, is this? The, do we have a specific timeline to achieve these goals? Uh, we do not have a specific timeline. Yes, correct, Victor. So this is the 2030 agenda. So sometimes, uh, yeah, correct, Bonita. So sometimes uh, some uh, people talk about. You know, especially when you go to the, the Western side, uh, um, whenever you go for conferences, some people will be talking about Agenda 2030. So whenever you hear Agenda 2030, it's not something that is different. Uh. Agenda 2030 is very much about the Sustainable Development Goals. So some people talk about SDG, some say uh, UNESCO SDG, you know, some talk about uh, Agenda 2030. So basically, they're talking about the same thing. Agenda 2030 SDG is about the 17 goals. Okay, And the idea of this 17 Sustainable Development Goal is to create uh, real impact and societal change uh, uh, in, in a global basis, right? So uh, many countries have uh, embraced the Sustainable Development Goals and, uh, and we are trying to apply these uh, Sustainable Development Goals in the research impact initiatives that we do, right? So you have about 17 goals. Now, the most important question is, uh, which of these goal that resonates with your research, that connects with your research? So are you familiar with these goals? And most importantly, which connects to your research? So could you share in the chat, uh, those who are actively doing research now and you're familiar with your sustainable development goals, could you share? What is your subject area and which uh, research goal connects to that? So, for example, I'm into education. So, which um, uh, SDG goals connects to that? And it doesn't necessarily be one. It could be two, could be three, could be four uh, or probably more. Okay, Victor, you say sustainable development tree, which is good health and well-being. So, Victor, you are from uh, what subject area, please? Is it health sciences? Public health, yes. Okay, good. So public health, yep. So it's related to SDG number three. Uh, Kita says education. Yes, you're from education and it's related to uh, SDG number four, quality education. Any other sharing? And sometimes uh, it's not necessarily just one. Uh, your research initiatives can impact multiple goals at the same time. Okay, I will show you some, some examples any other sharing? So we have two from education, one from public health. Anyone who has uh, two or more SDG goals related to your specific project? Nana? Okay. Um, Oh, Prof. Moy, so SDG number 2, 3, and 12. So true is zero hunger, 3 is good health and well-being, and number 12 is responsible consumption and production. Okay, and Prof. Moy is in sustainable diet, huh? uh, research area of sustainable diet and health. Okay, so thank you for, for sharing that. 
excellent. So you can see that how you can connect three SDGs to one impact initiative. Okay, I'm going to show you an example of, um, okay, Aza, good health and well-being, industry innovation and infrastructure. So that is SDG number nine and SDG number three. Okay, and Victor says that SDG number eight is also connected uh, to your impact initiative, which is decent work and economic growth. Okay, far is SDG number three, eight, and nine. Wow, what the number is doing on good health and well-being. Uh? Uh, so that's number three. Number eight, decent work and economic growth. Number nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Okay. I think uh, among all the 17 goals, uh, among uh, quite a number of research projects that I've come across, actually, I, I find that the SDG with the least amount of, uh, I mean, the research project uh, with the least amount of connection to SDG goals, and, and not just my experience, this is also uh, uh, what I've heard generally across many researchers is SDG 14, uh, which is life below water. Um, so, you know, we're talking about the underwater world and all this, right? So, uh, it seems that SDG 14 is not uh, as uh, many impact initiative as compared to all the other um, SDGs that we have there. Okay, so maybe more SDG 14 is, is needed, huh? uh, especially for those who are doing research in this area. Uh, so, SDG 14 is why for... Uh, UMT as they do marine research. Yeah, sometimes it's the research that you do. Lah. So whether the university actually has that research capacity uh, to do uh, marine life uh, research and so on. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm going to show you is actually uh, some of the uh, SDG uh, goals uh, that has been tied together. And this is by uh, Emerald Publishing. So if you go through um, Emerald Publishing's research, uh, uh, website, uh, you can see that they have the uh, impact initiative. Uh, and here you can see that I, I love the way that how they have clustered it together. Okay, how they have clustered it together, right? And you can see that um, here, the first goal is about fairer society, a fairer society. So when you talk about fairer society, they are actually looking at multiple SDG goals. So you're looking at number one, number two, number five, number eight, number 10, and number 16. So here you can see that they are talking about what? Um, they are passionate to work with researchers globally to deliver a fairer, more inclusive society. Okay, and here they are talking about um, helping create a society that is inclusive and embracing without any barriers to participation based on sex, sexual orientation, religion, belief, ethnicity, age, class, or ability and where there's access to healthcare, education, technology, justice, strong institution, peace, security, social protection, decent work, and housing. So you can see that how they have classified. Uh, they have classified about six SDGs into one team, which is fairer society. Okay, so this will be one example of um, how you could relate uh, some impact initiatives to multiple SDGs at one time. So this will be on fairer society. Now, another one is on healthier lives. Okay, so quite a number of our researchers this morning is doing on good health and well-being, and they have clustered it together where you have no poverty, zero hunger, good health, uh, six, number eight, and number 10. So here they're talking about uh, the importance of a world that protects the most vulnerable and acknowledge the importance of healthy mind as well as healthy body. And here we are talking about their ethos here, equity and helping researchers move beyond restriction of traditional subject disciplines. And here they're talking about how they could support impact initiatives, uh, support the work and respond to the need of researchers, practitioners, policy makers, service users, and their families and carers by bridging the gap that can exist between research and practice and different disciplines. So what are they focusing on is on these um, areas, social and economic factors that contribute to good health, uh, including no poverty, hunger, clean air, uh, water and sanitation, um, shelter, use of health care, reduction of health inequalities, and they aim to help to change, especially in terms of people's health and well-being. So they have classified this into one thing, which is called healthier lives. Now, another example will be on responsible management. 
So they have clustered about uh, another six goals, number eight, number nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay, and they've clustered it under responsible management. Here we are talking about uh, institutions recognize that governance should be just lawful and built on ethical and sustainable practices. Okay, and um, Emerald will work to facilitate real impact, uh, especially on uh, helping institutions lead with integrity and are underpinned by robust management systems and are educating future leaders across all industries. Okay, so here is another good example of how do we cluster this into one team, which is responsible management. And the last one is called uh, quality education for all, where they've uh, clustered three into one, uh, SDG 4, 10, and 16. Okay, so here we are talking about uh, uh, helping researchers to share their work and partner to find ways to break down device so there's equal opportunity to access quality education and participate in higher education training and work with a voice that is heard. Okay, and here they are talking about uh, the belief that everyone should have equal chance, the best chance, regardless of where they started. So what is so interesting about these four teams? Anyone notice what is so interesting about these four teams? What is the one thing that captured your attention among the, the four uh, teams that I've shared? Any, any part of this? Okay, maybe just look at this slide. Uh, anything that captured your attention? Any area that captured? Fairer society, okay. So in terms of support, in terms of support, do you think that you can get some form of support to do your impact initiative? So if you are a researcher or an author, you can see that this is an offer that is given by um, Emerald Publishing. So they have given actually there are four areas. Okay, there are four teams. So here, if you are an author, you are a researcher or someone who cares as much as they do. So they have highlighted they are looking at four teams, four areas. Okay, and if you are a researcher that is doing very much on this area, they will love to work with you. So Emerald would like to work with you and help your research to contribute to quality education. So you can actually get in touch with them. Uh, so this is the link uh, here. You can uh, quickly um, bookmark this link so that uh, you can get in touch with them later. So if you have a project idea and you would like to work closely with Emerald uh, to have this uh, impact initiatives, uh, you need to be focusing on this four teams. So I'm going to go back again, quality education for all, responsible management, healthier lives, and better society. So if you are doing in any of these areas, okay, you are able to get in touch with Emerald and Emerald is able to um, help you to in terms of your impact initiatives. Okay. Now, when we talk about impact initiatives, uh, so we are looking at, you know, sometimes when you do research, uh, we are always, uh, you know, have the, uh, especially those who are in academy, uh, uh, sorry, academy, those who are in academia, we are mostly looking at this area, you know. So how do I disseminate my, my research in, in terms of uh, visibility, in terms of increasing citation, you know, and, you uh, uh, you know, uh, publishing in multiple platforms and all this. So we are, we are always focusing on this. Sometimes we are focusing on how can we engage uh, key stakeholders. For example, if I'm doing a research on uh, school principalship and I publish a paper on this, how can I uh, ensure that the school principals are actually reading my work? Because sometimes we put this research can contribute to policy making. This research can uh, be beneficial to school principals. Let's say if I'm doing a research on school principals, but how do we ensure whether this people are actually reading in on it. So sometimes we are looking into this and, you know, uh, in, involving, say, policy making. So how do we involve key stakeholders? How do we uh, see possible end users in this? And we are looking at co-production. So sometimes, you know, we are only focusing on this. But when we talk about uh, research impact, uh, it's beyond this. It's beyond this. It's not just limited to this. It's beyond this. So it's research outside of academia. How do we use with the research that we have produced outside of academia? So if you're doing anything outside of academia, that means beyond these four scopes, then we are talking about research impact. 
And when we talk about research impact, uh, you have uh, many types of impact here. So some of it I've already um, highlighted to you, some of the uh, research impact statements by the um, in US, in England, in Australia. And you can see that what are the kind of uh, impact they are looking at, uh, what is kind of impact initiatives. So here you can see there are many scopes here. You can look at culture impact. And when we look at culture impact, we are looking at something that uh, uh, could be related to uh, uh, changing the values of the society. Uh, it can be something related to their attitudes also as well. It can be something related to their beliefs as what uh, Dr. Sheena has shared. Uh, so she's doing on linguistic and, um, and culture. And you can see that how is it related to cultural impact. Uh, if you're talking about economic impact, we can look at uh, something that is about cost savings. It could be something about uh, increasing revenue, increasing uh, profits, something related to funding. Okay, so that will be something on economic impacts. Uh, when we look at environmental in, uh, impact, we could look about, uh, you know, uh, like, for example, you see pollution, for example, uh, one of our researchers shared, uh, uh, Victor, okay, so it's about uh, pollution, and then we can talk about uh, habitat, uh, habitat uh, uh, conservation, we can talk about ecosystem, uh, we can talk about genetic diversity, and when we talk about social impacts, uh, this one basically is more or less related uh, to education, improvement in uh, human life, improvement in the human rights, when we look at um, health and well-being, we are looking at, uh, okay, health and well-being is basically well understood, but we are looking at how do you improve health and well-being in individuals or groups. And when we look at policy influences, we can see that how is your impact initiatives uh, could influence policy making in the future, okay? And is there new guidelines that can be uh, amended? Uh, can existing policies be amended? Can new guidelines be formulated? That will be on uh, policy influence. And then uh, it can also have uh, legal implications as well. So can, can it influence legal uh, laws in any way? And also we have other impact initiatives like uh, uh, change in attitudes, preparedness and all this. So these are some of the uh, key areas of impact. Okay, so any, I'm gonna stop here at the moment. Do you all have any questions so far? Or anything that you would like to add on, you'd like to share? Maybe I can share that. Yes, the go ahead. Yes, please. Uh, go ahead. Oh, when I, background now. Tadi <laughs> salah. <laughs> okay, okay, wait. When I when I when I work on rehabilitation engineering technology and things like that, um, I started in UM ten years ago, more than ten years ago. So it's it's more research oriented. But I think the fact that I work with doctors in the hospitals in um, Manila Selatan, especially the rehab doctors and patients and um, um, secara tidak langsung indirectly it has influenced them to now we have uh, if you if some of you may already know we have clinic clinic rehabilitation robotic in PPUM just launched so um, it was um, not my original intention but I believe it has my involvement with them somehow has influenced them to you know see how biomedical engineers are, are able to be at the forefront of you know being consultant with the patient to the patient themselves so um, sometimes um, what I want to share is sometimes we don't expect things to be to turn out the way it, it will be because if, if we think in our own terms I want it to be this way, this way, this way, but it may not happen, but somehow our movement has, has ripple effect on other people and that other people's um, initiative. So the, the, the clinic was, was initiated by the hospital themselves, you know, things like that. that I, and then they invited me to be part of it. And, you know, it's not, um, I think if you, your, your intention is good and you, you strategize a bit and you be quite open to it, um, opportunities can come and impact can happen earlier than you expected, I hope. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Azhar, for that sharing. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. yes, uh, so you can see that, for example, what Dr. Azhar has shared, uh, uh, basically, sometimes it's not your direct involvement, and uh, sometimes it's the ripple effect of uh, your influence 
on the research that you do can have a ripple effect on the people around you. Um, so that is another uh, excellent sharing by uh, Dr. Azar in terms of the robotic clinics. Yeah, So you can go and check it out also as well. Huh? So I think that uh, I'm quite interested to go and check it out myself also as well. Um, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Azar. Okay. Uh, you see, uh, one of the b uh, biggest challenge when we talk about uh, research initiatives, uh, research impact is about uh, what exactly that needs to be uh, done. You know, how, how can we do it and, you know, how much impact it can have on the society. So in the case of uh, Dr. Azza, you can see that it was not an immediate impact, uh, but it was a ripple effect. Uh, so uh, whatever that she has done has influenced uh, the practice in the society and uh, in, the, in the clinics, for example. But um, if you want to design a, a research impact project, you know, so there are many, many ways of doing it. And one of the best uh, approaches is what we call the uh, design and uh, developmental research. So this, in my faculty, uh, this will be the design that uh, we, uh, most often that we use and we emphasize. Um, so it's divided into uh, four stages. Uh, you can see there's needs analysis, there's design, there's development, there's implementation and evaluation. So basically DDR is quite uh, well known if you are uh, intending to develop a new curriculum, you're intending to develop a new product, uh, a new module, a new instructional method and all this. So this uh, DDR approach will be uh, something that for you to be uh, looking at quite seriously. So when we look at uh, needs analysis, so it's, you, you have four phases here. And one thing good about uh, DDR approach is the validity and reliability of this model is strengthened. It's, it's very strong and strengthened is because it's, it's based on four phases and four phases has its own um, significance and its own influences. So basically if you look at needs analysis, right? So first of all, uh, you need to have an idea what exactly that you want to impact the society. What exactly is a problem that you want to solve in the society? But to cross check, uh, to cross check uh, whether that is actually a problem in the society is where we do a needs analysis. So you can start with phase one, where you, you do a needs analysis here, okay? And basically this needs analysis is basically for you to identify uh, whether the problem that you, you had in mind, is it applicable in the society? Or is there something more? Is there a deeper problem? So you, we need to understand that we, we cannot possibly um, uh, solve all problems in the society and you're not expected to do so. But if you can form some, uh, okay, Dr. Sheena. Oh, okay. All right, thank you, Dr. Sheena, yeah? So if you, if you can form some form of uh, impact, if you can solve some problems, that, that will be sufficient. So it doesn't have to be a very large scale. So especially for those who are new into research impact, uh, you can start something at a small scale. So you can do a needs analysis, for example. Um, you can uh, survey, you can start with a survey, you can start uh, with an interview. So you have two different approaches. You can do a quantitative, you can do a qualitative here, and you can start, uh, uh, with the needs analysis. And then once you have identified what is the problem, okay, then you can move into the uh, design phase. Okay, so in the design phase here, uh, this is where you can get um, experts involved. Uh, so for example, you want to verify, you want to verify whether the needs analysis is accurate and all this, you can get expert views involved and all this. Uh, you can interview people, uh, experts in the area and to get their point of view, how you could further enhance uh, that 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 idea that that needs analysis that you have identified, and then you move into that development um, stage, and then eventually you start to implement, and then you evaluate. So in the design stage, um, you have a method called the uh, fuzzy Delphi fuzzy Delphi technique. So if you're not very familiar about fuzzy Delphi, maybe you can do a little bit more reading on this. So the design stage uh, is usually. Uh, associated with Fuzzy Delphi. I mean, there are many, many other techniques out there, but one of the common ones is Fuzzy Delphi, uh, where you design uh, that module that you're going to, uh, before the development, uh, before the development, um, you relate the needs analysis and you start designing it based on feedback from experts. So that will be called the Fuzzy Delphi technique. So I um, encourage you maybe to explore on this, um, especially if you want to start your impact initiatives huh? and in, in the way that you want to identify the problem and you want to verify uh, whether that problem is 
uh, relevant to the society. Because at the end, we want to do a research that impacts the society, that has uh, a contribution to the society. Uh, otherwise, uh, then it might not be as impactful or no impact at all. Okay, um, so you, you want to keep that in mind. So uh, DDR is one of the uh, best approach uh, for you to utilize. And I noticed that quite a number of uh, uh, high grants, uh, you know, in, in UM, you call, we have the UM CAS uh, research grant. You, I will share a little bit on that. And you, we even have the UM Lighter grant as well. Uh, UM Lighter is related to teaching and learning grant uh, that is under EDEC. And uh, some of the gold award winners and uh, those who have won awards in, in these grants, uh, uh, most time, most of the time, I notice my this is through my own observation. Um, they are using a DDR approach, which is quite effective, uh, where you identify the needs and then uh, you develop something, uh, cross check with experts, and then finally you implement it, evaluate if it's effective. Okay, so any questions on uh, DDR approach? I mean, I'm not really an expert in this, but uh, it's just to give you an idea about how you can design uh, research impact program based on this approach. You all have any questions on this? Dr. Don, you read it, the Delphi fit in again? Sorry. Uh, design, design stage, design phase. Ah, okay. Fuzzy Delphi, fuzzy Delphi technique. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, let us switch gear. Sorry, anyone? Want to say something as well? Uh, good morning, Doctor. Okay, hi, Kita. Kita, you can go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, um, this uh, RRD is it for model development? Okay. Or is it uh, for normal research? Okay, you can use this DDR for a no, for is a is a research by itself. Uh, DDR is a research by itself, but usually we use this to develop a curriculum, uh, instructional model. You want to develop a product, you know. So this is uh, the kind of research that we use, the, which is quite common and popular. Um, specifically, is the intention is to develop a new curriculum, uh, instructional module, or any product designs and all this, you no? Know? So sometimes product design can be related to another concept called design thinking. Okay, so design thinking. So uh, DDR will be, uh, design thinking, you've got three phases, whereas DDR, you have four phases, exactly. You know, so the needs analysis is not in the design thinking part, it's ideation. Yeah? So you have an idea and then you start designing. That is design thinking. That is if you want to develop a product, okay? But uh, for DDR, you have four uh, where the needs analysis is added there. Okay, so basically, um, your end results is intended to solve the problem or the needs analysis that you have identified in the first place. Okay, uh, I think there's some check here. I have to leave. I have schedule a watch recording. Thank you for all the nice shares this morning. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Sumeya. Okay, so you all can check out this uh, DDR approach. Okay. Um, and, and read some case studies, uh, especially on this DDR approach. Now, um, let me shift gear a little bit. Uh, what is important here is, um, what is your subject area? So, thank you, understood. Okay, very sorry for technical problem. Okay, uh, what is your subject area? So, is uh, all of you, we, uh, this morning we have about 30-something uh, now, okay? And uh, you all come from different, different subject areas, okay? We can see there's some coming from education, uh, come, coming from uh, public health. Um, any other subject areas? Can you all just put in your list, uh, in your list, put in the chat, what is the subject area that you are coming from? So we have education, we have public health. Yes, so ZOL is energy and environment. Okay, nice. Then you have education there. Any other subject area? We have public health earlier. Your subject area, yeah? What is your subject area? You don't have to be very specific, like just, just uh, something in general. What is the subject area? Okay, uh, 
Dr. Azhar, Biomedical Engineering. Okay, uh, Bushrao is Engineering. Healthcare, nice. Okay, any other subject areas that we have here? Okay, now, uh, sometimes when when you want to do an impact initiative, getting an idea is a struggle. Huh? Sometimes it's like, you know, I, I know my area and all this, but, you know, what, what idea I can uh, apply, you know, what, what, what can I do? You know, I, I really want to contribute something beyond academia. I want to, uh, uh, you know, make a change in the society, but, you know, I need some ideas, you know, so idea can be a real struggle uh, sometimes. Uh. So where, where to get an idea? You know, sometimes if you see uh, people that is doing research initiatives, uh, uh, impact initiatives, we can ask the idea. But sometimes impact initiatives is quite less. Uh, even in, in UM, I noticed that, uh, uh, you know, impact initiatives is, is uh, not very high yet. It's not a very high level. We are striving towards that, but we are not at a very high level yet. Uh, so doing impact initiatives like what uh, Prof uh, Moy shared, can be very time consuming and can be very challenging as well uh, because it, it takes a lot of time. So that is probably why the reason uh, why it, there's not much impact initiatives done. But sometimes one of the biggest obstacles is about getting an idea. So is there any resource? Is there any insight about, you know, what kind of things I can do in my research area? Okay, like for example, Lok says abbreviation law. Uh, so how do I make an uh, impact initiative uh, f with abbreviation law, for example, healthcare, biomedical, okay, education. So I'm going to give you a, this very nice resource, you know, and this resource is called the uh, Research Excellence Framework, okay? I'm not sure why they put it as 2014, lah, but uh, they seem to be very comfortable with 2014. Now it's 2022, but never mind. Lah. Uh, but when it's 2014, doesn't mean that the cases um, here is uh, only at 2014. It's actually up to date until now. Um, so this research excellence framework, okay, uh, this involves um, all the universities in the United Kingdom. This is basically impact case studies in the UK. Uh, impact case studies in the UK. So you can see that um, one thing good about this website, I provided the, the source here, is you have uh, impact case studies based on your subject area. So you have mathematical science, physical science, chemical, bio, environment, and all this. So this is just few. Actually, it's a very, very long uh, uh, list of subject areas. And these numbers that you can see here at the side, uh, the number of case studies. So basically, these are impact initiatives, impact initiatives, uh, case studies that has been done in the UK. So if you need to get some idea that is relevant to your research area on impact initiatives, now this will be a very, very good resource. So you can see that they have even put it according to impact areas. Uh, if you want to impact in terms of uh, political, health, technological, economic, legal culture and all this environment they also have classified this so you when you open this uh, case studies website you have a tab where you can select whether you want to look at subject area and then you're going to get all this or you want to look uh, specifically at the impact type uh, what impact political health or technological what and you will get uh, a tab like this with a number of cases so you can see that Quite a number is focusing on technological impact. This number has risen tremendously because of the latest, uh, because of our, of our COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, earlier, the number wasn't very high, but because of the pandemic, this number has become very, very high. And then you can see that in terms of societal impact, the number is also quite high. Okay, so you can check out this website. Uh, this is a fantastic website that gives you some idea. Okay, on, on uh, what kind of impact initiatives and gives you that idea of what you can uh, do in your specific subject area. Okay, so please go and check it out. Uh, let, me, let me share the link for you here uh, so that you are able to check it out as well. I'm going to share the link in, in the chat here. Okay, so you, you can check out that link there. Okay, and you can see what is the sort of um, impact initiatives uh, that you can do specifically in your subject area so that 
you get an idea uh, what exactly that you need to do, uh, what exactly that you can do in your subject area. Okay, so let me just run the slide again. Okay, so this is on impact case studies. Huh? Uh, so you, you do go and check it out. You have the link there. Now I'm going to move into Myra. Okay, so this is very close. Uh, Myra, uh, this is in a Malaysian context. Huh? So uh, when you do impact initiatives, it has to be connected to the uh, Myra star rating. Okay, so we have uh, five different areas here. In terms of Myra, we have five different areas here. Okay, so uh, we have... Uh, adoption of change, we have sustainability, we have program acceptance, we have meeting community needs, and we have knowledge, aspiration, skills, or attitudes and change. So you can see that in these five areas, for example, adoption of change, what criteria are they looking at specifically? They are looking that the community program results in a change of practice. So that means that whatever that we deliver, Okay, whatever that we impact, there is a change in the society, a change in attitudes or change of uh, beliefs, change of doing things, you know, so there is a change in practice. And then here, uh, the participants is able to uh, use or adopt the innovation that has been introduced. So if there's any product or innovation specifically, they are able to use it, they're able to adopt that innovation. So this will be one criteria. Another criteria is looking at sustainability. So the community is empowered and can independently sustain the practice that was introduced through the program. Ah, and then participants continue to practice innovation without UM's assistance. So this is talking about the sustainability. So what happens if UM is removed and you as a researcher is removed? Uh, the, is the initiative able to sustain? Is it able to sustain in the short term, in the long term? Can the community continue without your assistance and the institution assistance? So this is talking about the sustainability. Here we are talking about program acceptance. The community has a positive orientation towards the program, has an attendance exceed or equal to 80%. So if, for example, if you do a program or anything, about attendance rate. He's talking about attendance rate of the people that is involved. And then here, meeting community needs. The community consider the program relevant and needed. Uh, a formal university community cooperation agreement exists. Um, so this one, there needs to be some signed letters of agreement that they, uh, the community is agreed to participate in the research initiative and uh, agree to be part of the research in initiative. So then there must be some form of um, agreement and clear uh, uh, formal statement saying that how many people is going to involve, who is going to be involved in all this. And stakeholders generally agree to implement the program. So if you are collaborating with any stakeholders, there should also be a letter of agreement uh, with stakeholders. So for example, if I'm doing a project in collaboration with Microsoft, then Microsoft needs to give me a letter saying that they agree to be a stakeholder. They agree to uh, participate and uh, contribute towards the project and in what manner will they be participating and cooperating? So that has to be clearly stated in there. And also you have the last one, which is knowledge, aspiration, skills, or attitude and change. So the community action program results in change in attitude, knowledge, skills, and aspiration. Participants exhibit a change in attitude, knowledge, skills, or aspiration. So you can see that there are five areas. Now, each of these five areas has a star rating. So the minimum is one. Maximum is five. Uh, minimum is one rating. Maximum is five. So can you look through this uh, engagement rating, uh, star rating, and let me know for number one. For number one, this one, uh, adoption of change. Minimum is one star. Maximum is five star. So what do you think is the star rating for number one? According to Myra, adoption of change. Is it? One star, two star, three star, four star, five star. How many star rating is this? Can you give in number? One, two, three, four, five, maximum five. Huh? For the first one, adoption of change. Okay, so I have four, four, three. Any other answers? Four, four, three, yeah? Okay. How about the next one? Sustainability. 
How many star rating is this? Sustainability. Five. Five. One or two. Right? Azza, uh, you mean for number two, uh, sustainability, yeah? Uh? Okay, one or two, all right? Sustainability, yeah? Uh, four. Okay. How about the third one now? Program acceptance. This one. Program acceptance. How many star rating? Four, five, two. Okay. Four, five. Wow. Very big scale. Huh? Some is telling four. Some is telling two, three. Okay. Now let's move on to the next one. Meeting community needs. This one. How many star rating? Three, four, four. Four star ratings, huh? so you're averaging three or four, huh? okay? And the last one, knowledge, expression, skills, or attitude. How many stars for this one? Four, four, three. Okay. You all want to know the answer? <laughs> what is the answer? For this, actually, each of it is a rating. Huh? There's one star, two star, three star, four star, and five star. So, if you look at the answer, this is actually the rating for my uh, Myra. So, which is given one star, which is given two star, which is given three star, four star, and five star. So, the one that has the five star one is, of course, the best. Uh, so, if any of your impact initiative has five star, uh, that is the best. Um, so, um, you can see that which one is one star. So one star is people just attending the program, you know, just want to come and hear, and you get 80% attendance, there's only one star. Uh, whereas two star is here, uh, you can see that people agree to participate. Uh, your stakeholder also agree. Uh, the, the people also agree. There's uh, some statement to say that they agree. This is only two star, and then eventually they participate. Uh, this is building from one to another. So first they attend, this one is they attend and also they agree that you have stakeholders and other people who agree to participate. Okay, but three star is this one, uh, four star and five star is this one. So I'm going to break it down for you and to show you exactly uh, how, how and what is the criteria. So if you go here, uh, if you can see, for example, what they have stated here, a project has to achieve a minimum of three star impact rating in order to contribute to Myra performance. So if you are doing any uh, impact initiative, any impact program, the minimum you need to achieve is at least three star. Anything below three star is not meeting Myra requirement. So sometimes that's why uh, we, we hear researchers, uh, sometimes I, I do my project paper, I do my proposal and all this, but somehow I don't get the funding. You know, nobody wants to fund. It is because the, the reason could possibly be that your project doesn't have a high Myra rating. You, you don't have a star impact rating. So anything minimum you need is three impact rating. Anything below three, uh, you are not meeting the Myra requirement. So you need to have a minimum of three. So here, for example, to get three star, uh, the community should have a positive orientation towards the program where attendance is equal or exceed 80%. A minimum of one stakeholder is involved. Uh, so this stakeholder can be from government agency, can be industry, any NGOs. Okay, And when we talk about their involvement, what exactly they will be involved? Uh, you can you need to provide evidence that the community consider the program relevant and needed. Provide a formal USD community cooperation and agreement. So this one can be just in a simple form of letter. No need to be uh, any MOU or MOA, uh, memorandum or under understanding acceptance. No, uh. <laughs> just a simple letter will do. Uh. Okay, and then here uh, participants exhibit the expected change. Uh, based on the objective of the program. For example, change of attitude, increment of knowledge and skills. Now, if you want to get four or five, okay, this is what uh, they are looking at. Uh, program results in change of practice where the participants adopt the innovation or if number five, the difference between number four and number five is 
you have the sustainability part. Sustainability. So the practices is able to be sustained. Uh, so that is where you get a five-star rating. So they have a very specific measurement, you know, and this is the report. So it, whenever that we do a, a impact initiative, uh, impact programs, we will have to complete this report. So they have very specific for one-star rating, they will ask you to rate. This is not what they rating. They will ask you to rate and based on your uh, program proposal and report later on, uh, they will ask you to, uh, they will cross-check whatever, whatever that you have rated this is relevant to uh, the, what, sorry, whatever that you have rated here is relevant to what you have written in your proposal. Uh, so they are going to cross-check. So this is your self-rating. You evaluate and say what, how impactful your program is based on Myra and they will cross-check whatever that you evaluate here with what you have written in the proposal and see whether it's tally. So for example, for one star rating, you only need to ensure that your program has an attendance exceed or equal to 80%. So you need to put how many people that you are targeting, what is the actual attendance on that day, and what is the percentage that you have achieved. Uh, this is only equal to one star. Uh. So if your idea is to just do a webinar or just do a one-day workshop, touch and go style, uh, uh, then th this is going to be one star. Uh. Uh, so you are not able to uh, get that, that uh, uh, what do you call the Myra score. You're not able to score very high means that your program is not very impactful. Now, if you have a two-star rating, okay, you can see that uh, you have stakeholders involved. So that means this is solo. Lah. Number one is solo. Solo, you alone. Well, number two, you have other people working with you. So stakeholders agree uh, to implement uh, the program. So you have uh, industry players coming in or any NGOs coming to work with you, collaborate with you in the program. So if that's the case, then you have a two-star rating. And here you still have to indicate how many participants uh, involved, uh, total number of participants, and then what is the percentage. So this you have to evaluate. Huh? And then here you have very specific, huh? you need to provide evidence. So for evidence here, you have an attendance list. Whereas for two-star rating, you need to provide evidence of a questionnaire, means that you have captured data using a questionnaire or captured data using an interview question. So this is for two-star rating. For three-star rating, okay, we are looking at a change in attitude, knowledge, or skills, or aspiration. So here you have to report how many people are involved, um, uh, number of people who indicate they know the subject matter, respond positively to change. So you need to have some, you know, uh, one of our uh, researcher in the morning, I think Lee, if I may say that, he asked about how, how to measure, you know, how to quantify uh, this. So this will be ways on how you can measure and quantify. So using the Myra system. So you can see, for example, how many know the subject, how many positively uh, uh, responded to the change, how many has acquired the desired skills. So all these you need to evaluate using a, a form of a survey. You can use a interview transcription or you have other form of analysis. So basically you need to provide evidence. This evidence needs to touch upon all these uh, aspects. And if you have a four-star rating, here is the participants adopted the innovation that was introduced. So how many people who adopted the change? And then here, what is the evidence? You need to provide evidence that they have adopted. So it's not you saying it. Um, there is some form of research or some form of documentation, uh, interview or, or, or survey done uh, for you to justify uh, the ratings that you have provided. Okay, any observation checklist. So this results in four. And the final one, the grand one, is the five star. Okay, so you have any project that is five star. Uh, participants continue to practice the innovation without the institution's assistance. So here you need to report um, in terms of how many people are continuing the practice, what is the economic uh, benefit, what is the improved well-being, and all this. So these are some of the scores. And you also can provide evidence in terms of uh, survey, report, observation checklist, analysis. So you can notice that uh, the project that you do is not just to conduct the, the program, not just to conduct the program and the project. You need to have some form of evaluation um, at the end to gauge the impact of the program. Okay, so this is how we prove uh, to Myra that uh, what star rating is our project falling under. Okay, so any questions on the Myra rating?
Dr. Tony, where is this available, Dr. Tony? Uh, this is available actually in the Myra website and also available in any community engagement kind of uh, uh, rating form. I see, I see. In, in Malaysian public universities. All right. Okay, uh, Prof. Moy say when is rating done at the end? The rating is done at the end. Okay, but uh, there is two, uh, there is some universities, um, they do it this way. The rating is done in the beginning itself. Uh, I think somebody needs to mute. There's somebody not muted here. Okay, the uh, some universities are uh, okay, for example, like UMCAS, UMCAS grant uh, in University Malaya, we have UMCAS, and UMCAS is involved in community engagement outreach programs and all this. So, UMCAS actually uh, requires us when you want to submit the proposals for you to give your star rating first okay your star rating first and then uh, later on you uh, write a project proposal and they evaluate and see whether whatever that you have rated in the myra is equivalent to whatever that you have written in your proposal and then later on once your program is completed you still need to rate it again because sometimes it can change uh, pre and post uh, so this will be uh, UM's practice, but in other universities, for example, in UTM, uh, this rating is done after the project. Uh, so it depends on which university and context lah, that you are in. But this uh, rating doesn't differ pre and post. It's the same. So whenever that you plan and design, make sure that you have this captured. Lah. Can I ask a question, Dr. Donny? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Prof. Point. So this is done for what kind of grant? Uh, community engagement grants. Uh, okay. uh, so anything that is related to community engagement, societal impact, uh, this is the kind of uh, Myra rating that they want. Uh, there is one, my Innovasi social yes. community, but they didn't ask us to do this. My 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 SI, my, my, my SI, IS yeah. community. I, uh, yeah. yeah. So yes, they didn't uh, ask us though, to do. Uh, <laughs> That's why they, sometimes the grants they don't ask to do, but uh, they have their evaluation methods. So any any grants, uh, especially for Malaysian context lah, even uh, not just the universities, you know, even uh, I partnered with Bank Rakyat, I partnered with uh, MPPJ, they also look into Myra, you know. So surprisingly, even though they are not in public higher education institution, they are not a uh, 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 education institution, but they are still looking at Myra impact, you know. So uh, even though they don't uh, outline this uh, requirement clearly. But this is the sort of expectations. Like, this is how they will evaluate the impact initiatives. But this sustainability is very difficult to, to estimate. This one yeah. is when you, if you submit during the proposal, you don't really know. It's just an estimation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You estimate to be very good. Yes, yes, that's correct. That is why uh, you also have uh, pre and post. So some, some universities, uh, like for example in UM, uh, especially UMCAS, grants and all this, they have pre input. So you need to put in your proposal what is the expected star rating. And at the end, uh, your final report, you will also have to report what is the final star rating as well. You know, so uh, you need to do it twice. Uh, so they, they, like what, from what you said, there could be a difference uh, of uh, pre and post. You know, so other institutions, they only require you to submit at the end of the program. So you need to see where, where the context is. Lah. But generally, what I'm trying to say is, the impact initiatives that you do uh, should be related to the Myra star rating. So you should be familiar with the star rating and orient your program initiatives uh, to the star rating to stand a uh, higher impact. Okay, so, uh, okay, any, any other questions uh, on this? Okay, so for, the, for those researchers who are struggling uh, uh, to find out that... Uh, you know, who are the people that we can collaborate, which organizations we are collaborate. Actually, University of Malaya has already signed quite a lot of MOU uh, and MOA, Memorandum of Understanding and Acceptance. Uh, 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 sorry, acceptance, agreement. Memorandum of Agreement and uh, Understanding with many institutions and bodies. You, These are some examples of uh, the MOU and MOA that University of Malaya has signed. And uh, these are the memberships that is um, at the moment available under University of Malaya uh, and in terms of industry partnership we also have quite a number of them that is already uh, uh, signed MOU or MOA. Now this in information you can get from the 
uh, corporate communication office of UM. Uh, corporate communication office will have this information. So it's, it, you can look into the kind of MOU or MOA that has been signed. If you are you are interested to cooperate with a particular stakeholder or industry partnership, uh, you can ask what uh, the kind of MOU or MOA, what is the kind of partnership they're looking at. So sometimes they are a very specific criteria. So this is where uh, I'm able to secure. This is some of the list uh, that I'm able to secure some of the grants that I'm able to get um, in terms of the program impact. So I work with the uh, head foundation in Singapore, uh, Commonwealth Association University, Bank Rakyat, uh, Teach for Malaysia, MPPJ, UNICEF. Uh, I've even worked with uh, Indonesia. Uh, so all these are grants that they have given to me uh, to conduct impact initiative uh, programs. Uh, ETS Zurich is in Switzerland and also in USM Rhythm Foundation. So it's quite important for us to uh, be aware uh, what exactly that the, the stakeholders need, what exactly that they want, so that uh, when you do an, any program initiatives, um, it's, uh, it's aligned to their expectation, it's aligned to their needs. Um, and also for your information to, for everyone here, you might or you might not be aware. Um, University of Malaya also has double tax exemption given to any industries who... Uh, uh, is willing to contribute in terms of uh, any research grant uh, oriented to the science and technology. So if you have any projects or any impact initiatives that is uh, relevant to science and technology, that industry that contributes the grant, the money, uh, can get double tax exemption. Uh, so uh, you can cross-check this with I. Uh, I, IPPP, IPPP and the Research Grant Management uh, Center, they will be able to, they will evaluate your proposal and see that uh, whether it's suitable in the science and technology and whether it's suitable to get a uh, double tax exemption. So it's a win-win situation. Lah. So people give you money for you to conduct your impact initiative and uh, they are able to get a double tax exemption, you see. So this is a lot of things, lah, a lot of information that uh, researchers are not uh, aware of, you see. So I will suggest you to, uh, get this uh, information so that you can design your program in such a way to take advantage of all these added uh, benefits. Lah. Because sometimes when you engage with stakeholders, uh, they will want to know what is in for them. You know, So it's, so it's supposed to be a win-win situation. So if I, I give you some monetary contribution, uh, what can I get in return? So they, there must be some form of uh, win-win situation. So the double tax assumption is one of the things. Uh, there are many, many other uh, examples that I will show you later on, okay? Um, so any questions so far that you all have on this so far? Any questions? Okay, uh, one of the biggest uh, talk about uh, in our UM Town Hall House of Excellence, uh, <laughs> uh, we had a UM Town Hall recently, and one of the biggest debate that was uh, talked at this Town Hall is about uh, our KPI system. And one of the things that in the KPI system is we are, we are, we are talking about uh, where does uh, community engagement impact initiative reflected in our in our KPI system. So we have a new uh, KPI and uh, it seems that the scoring, uh, we have a point system now, very much point, point system. And it looks like community engagement and impact initiatives is not really the focus of the new KPI system. So there was a lot of uh, Q&A question and answer and all this in our KPI. Uh, and there's a good news for this. Uh, recently, they have uh, UM uh, management have decided to uh, revise the uh, 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 point system where uh, the, you have an added column called voluntary contribution. So they will revise for 2022. So coming 2022, they will have a column uh, 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 section called voluntary contribution. So anything that you do uh, in terms of contribution to the society, that can be captured as a KPI. So this is coming for the coming 2022. So the idea is basically is to support our researchers' impact ambition. So it's not just the ambition of the researcher, it's sometimes the role of the institution, the role of UM. How can 
you and play a role in this impact. So if uh, recognition is given, KPI is given to the researchers, uh, that will be in a way a support uh, towards the mission of the university, the vision of the university, and also the uh, impact and the vision of the researcher. So we, we want to build a culture of uh, 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 impact orientation, uh, appreciation. You know, you want to build a culture of uh, contribution. So this, uh, in a way, this coming 2022 will help. In that okay so those of you who are actively doing impact initiatives but you find uh, yeah, why, where do i put this in the kpi system uh, that is a struggle i had last year uh, but uh, thankfully now after so much of the discussion they have decided uh, agreed to actually um, edit and and revise it a little bit where you have voluntary contribution coming in for 2022 okay all right any questions on this on the on the KPI, voluntary contribution. Nana. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you some examples. These are some examples of projects that I've done before. Uh, uh, this uh, project was uh, on... Uh, the, the, this, I, I have a very special keen interest on special education. And um, I always help uh, a lot of... Uh, especially children with special needs. Uh, this is my passion. Uh, it's not really, uh, uh, it's something that I really enjoy doing uh, to, to, to help them and to, for them to grow. Uh, and you can see that this is one of the projects that I did. Uh, and this uh, project also received a five-star uh, Myra rating system where we did uh, a therapeutic uh, exercise uh, using sensory equipments for students with special needs. Huh? And we have collaborated with, I think, close uh, 10 schools where we actually uh, went to the schools. We went to the schools and we did this uh, program with the parents. So in terms of sustainability there is that it's not a one-touch go, uh, one-time program. We actually brought the parents there and we actually trained the parents on how to do this uh, therapeutic exercises with their children at home at home so as part of the sustainability sometimes you know training uh, we teach many things and sometimes uh, there is a challenge of them remembering everything so we have produced a module uh, this is in a form of a book okay and uh, this module you can see these are some examples of pages where you have step one step two and explaining about this so it's a, a form of an infographic module and all this step by step has been converted into a youtube video so sometimes uh, some of our community has challenge of reading uh, and understanding what is step one, step two, step three, so they can follow this YouTube video to, to also see in action. So this is one of the projects that we have done, uh, and, and this is the kind of brochure that we circulate, the timing and all this. So uh, this project won the best uh, award for Club Sahabat. Under UMKS, we have Club Sahabat uh, program. Uh, UMKS, you have different, different grants. One of the grants is called Club Sahabat. And uh, this program won the uh, best award, uh, best project award under the Class Sahabat uh, initiative. Club Sahabat is programs that is done in schools. So in UM, we have a number of schools that is involved um, that has agreed to cooperate with UM and join in any initiative. And this uh, agreement is called under program uh, Club Sahabat. So we have schools that is in Petaling Utama Bangsa. Uh, that is related to, to uh, affiliated to UM. Okay, so you can check out uh, this club, Sahabat. I will talk about UM case later. So this is one of the impact uh, uh, program that we did. You know, so we did a research on this and uh, we have uh, successfully uh, transferred the, the knowledge to the parents and, you know, we, we have done some testimony, we have captured, uh, we've done a survey, we've done a testimony and captured their voices about how their project is continuously um, uh, impacting them, uh, especially the children at home. This is one of the project. Another project that uh, I've also done is on uh, ecotherapy. So uh, this is about uh, being one with nature. This is about bringing children with special needs uh, into uh, nature. You know, so uh, what this program initiative, you see one of the problems that we uh, I discovered as a, in a special needs spectrum is uh, when a child is special needs, they need to be uh, given therapy. They need to be given interventions and all this. And this, 
therapies and intervention requires money, uh, requires a lot of investment. So uh, a lot of uh, 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 therapy centers, a lot of special education centers, uh, occupational therapy centers, all these to use their facilities and expertise, you, they need to, you need to pay some form of money. So some parents, they are not able to afford this uh, sort of interventions and programs. So this uh, program on uh, ecotherapy is using nature, the elements of nature as a uh, therapy for the children. So, you know, any nature, for example, is free. Uh, nature, you can, you, you don't have to pay to use nature. You can do any activities, therapeutic activities in the park. And uh, all these are given free. So we actually taught the parents how you can utilize elements in nature uh, to help your child in terms of therapy. And this uh, is also another award-winning uh, project where we collaborated about uh, with eight schools and we brought them to our Rimba Elmo. You know, in UM, we have Rimba Elmo, you know, Taman Rimba Elmo. So we brought them into Rimba Elmo and we actually did a program with them. I have a YouTube video. I have videos for each of these projects I can share with you later. And we actually uh, uh, wrote a book on this ecotherapy for child with special needs. It's also published under uh, one of our marketing publishers. And you can see that these are some of the infographic uh, pages that is available in the book. And this uh, a poster that we, we presented here, and this uh, project also won the Club Sabat Award and also the Best uh, Poster Award. La. <laughs> so, so you can see the, the poster is kind of colorful. La. So it won the <laughs> Best Poster Award. So you can see that we actually did some impact evaluation. Yeah? So we did a survey and we also did some interviews. So we captured the pre and post. The blue color bar is the pre and the orange color is the post. So you can see that there's a change in attitude and practices uh, in terms of the blue and uh, orange bar. And here we also did an interview. We did a video recording to capture the voices of the parents. So this was done with the parents and with the teachers. And they came to Rimba Elmu and we trained them uh, in terms of uh, uh, ecotherapy intervention. And it's free. So until today, uh, we I still hear parents texting me and say thank you, you know, because they can actually use this in any park. They can bring their children to any park and just do a, a exercise on that you know so this is um, something that uh, for you you know just to give you an idea another recent project that i did was on uh, this is related to pandemic lah, because i am a microsoft uh, certified trainer so there were a lot of uh, schools uh, uh, so not schools the ppd office contacted me and asked me can i do a program for the school teachers you know so uh, is there anything that i can contribute so this is the program that i did call the Microsoft Innovative Teachers Train the Trainers. So basically what we did was um, we selected 20 schools and out of the 20 schools, we actually picked uh, 20 trainers from each of the school and we trained them on how to use uh, Microsoft education technology. For example, Microsoft Teams, how to use uh, uh, Microsoft OneNote, how to use Microsoft Sway, how to use a different application and how to use it in terms of teaching and learning in their classrooms. So it's the train the trainer program. So uh, I collaborated with Microsoft and this project was funded with uh, by MPPJ. So MPPJ was very strict in terms of the Myra rating and it's a very, very competitive, not easy to get, but we got a quite a large grant. We got twice, twice funding from MPPJ, phase one and phase two. And we have successfully trained about 20 teachers and all 20 teachers is now certified by Microsoft as a Microsoft trainer. Um, so this is the kind of impact that we want. La. And we have also produced a book uh, as part of this project. So you can see that uh, how is the sustainability there? La? One of the uh, criteria that uh, my, my, my strategy is to produce a module, to pr produce a book as part of the project. So it can be a reference material, not just for the community involved. It can be a reference material for the communities that is not involved. So that means the people that is not involved in the project, are they... Uh, able to benefit from this? Can they benefit? So in what way can they benefit? So if they are not involved hands-on, uh, they are also involved in a way by reading and getting knowledge through this model and books. Okay, so these are some of the posters. Uh, you can see that uh, these all are done, the posters that is done by the teachers and uh, what are the sort of things that they will be teaching their, their teachers. So is uh, we training 20 teachers and these teachers, uh, teacher trainers, they train the teachers in the school. So it's uh, train the trainer. So 
uh, you can imagine the impact is like uh, close to 400 over teachers in Petaling uh, Utama and Bangsa who has now knowledge on how to use Microsoft education technology. So from 20 teachers, these 20 teachers train the teachers in their own school. And this is monitored by us, uh, by me and my, my team and Microsoft, you see. So they all design, they design their own program. These are some samples of the posters. This is also another samples of posters. Each of them, they designed it and uh, they invited their teachers to come for a one day training with them, uh, moderated and, uh, and uh, guided by us, you see. So these are some of the uh, posters that was done by the teachers. So uh, from these projects uh, that I've done, uh, many of it has been published in local press. So the idea is to actually disseminate this information to show that your impact initiatives is uh, uh, visible in the community. And the idea of the, this visibility is so that people can collaborate with you. I noticed that uh, when you publish this kind of impact initiatives in the newspaper, local conference, uh, local newspapers, uh, I have been approached by quite a number of uh, stakeholders and uh, different people who wanting to collaborate. Say, hey, I see that you have done a project on this uh, ecotherapy on Microsoft. You know, I, I actually have this idea. My organization have this idea. We have this funding, and you know, we we think that you are the right people to help us to execute. Hey, money coming in lah. <laughs> so this is where people want to to work with you, you know, because people see that you have the expertise. So uh, sometimes writing an article can uh, in newspapers uh, can take a little bit of time, but it's really very impactful. Uh, uh, this is just some, uh, I, there's many, many newspaper clippings, but I cannot put everything in one slide, but just to give you an idea of um, uh, you can disseminate your research uh, through the public uh, to get their attention. And from getting your attention, you can get funders along the way as well. And also, um, you've also been invited by media. So I also been invited by uh, uh, Wanita Harini, uh, Wanita Harini, to share about some of the impact initiatives, especially concerning uh, children with special needs. So, so this is one of the uh, media invitation. And also within UM, uh, we have also published quite a number. So for example, this research bulletin under UM, um, we I've also managed to publish one impact initiative on youth leadership, uh, a youth lead program. So this is what I mean by uh, disseminating your research uh, through the media, disseminating your research through uh, written reports. Now, the one of the best approaches is you can also disseminate your research through webinars. So uh, when you publish your uh, works, uh, your impact initiatives in media and newspapers, you get invitations to webinars. So for example, I, these are some of the webinars that I've been invited just very recently. This one is concerning uh, in Indonesia. This is uh, with an NGO called Rhythm. And uh, uh, this is uh, another uh, webinar under Rhythm. And this is under Microsoft. So I was actually among very few academics. You know, I think I, I am, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I was the only academician at this conference on sharing on Microsoft. And recently, uh, why Microsoft Asia, Southeast Asia invited me is because they saw my project initiatives in the newspaper. So that is where they called me to actually give a session on, on this because I have trained the Pataling Utama teachers and they wanted me to share that impact initiative and the module uh, to the larger community as part of the conference. So you can see how uh, the impact, la, the impact is not just in beneficial to the community, but also the impact is in terms of media and uh, webinars and all this. So I will encourage you uh, as much as possible to publish, uh, have a lot of visibility, publish your impact initiatives in LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Publons, ResearchGate. And uh, you know, the idea is to gain visibility so people can see that you are doing things and they want to work with you and uh, they want to collaborate with you. Uh, so this is the kind of star rating that Myra is looking. So Myra is not just looking at uh, sustainability. They are also looking at the visibility of the program as well, how visible the program is and how people are aware uh, about the program and the impact of your program. And in recently, in one of our, uh, our town hall, uh, sorry, not uh, this one is the VC, the Vice Chancellor's uh, New Year uh, speech. Uh, New Year speech. Uh, you can see that my project here was highlighted here, and this is one of the reason why is because of the high visibility and uh, impact initiative. So there are a few other projects here, but the, the reason one that I did with Microsoft Innovative Teachers was highlighted here. You know, so this is a kind of impact, uh, impact to the community. 
and uh, not just the community that is involved with you in your project, but the impact with the community outside of the program. Uh, so, for example, you produce books, so people that is not involved in the program can also benefit from it. Uh, newspapers, so people not involved in the program can also read and benefit and most importantly, replicate that project. And when they replicate it, they want you to be part of it because you are like the expert advisor for that, right? So, um, from the, all these initiatives, I've managed to successfully win the uh, University Malaya Community Engagement Award. And uh, this was in 2019. Uh, I think 2020 and 2021, there's not been any award. There's no Achung, Anugura Termalang University Malaya. Only in the last one was in 2019. So I won the uh, University Malaya Community Engagement Award. Um, so you can see that, you know, there are some recognition that will come to your way uh, if you have uh, done impactful research projects as well. Uh, and recently, uh, I've also won the Emerald Young Researcher Award 2021. Uh, so this award, you can see that uh, there's a nice certificate, there's a nice picture. This is William. <laughs> so William is with us. Yeah, okay, so this is William here. Okay, and uh, the award was also given by Prof. Shaliza. Okay, and uh, representative, these are two other representatives from uh, University A, from Emerald Publishing. Okay, and you can see that University is also very proud of your achievements. Um, so this is the kind of things that we want to do. Like. We want to do that impacts the society that uh, people take notice. And also, uh, you know, it, it, the university recognizes your efforts. So please do more impact initiatives so that the university can recognize your efforts as well. And if you want to get started, I will suggest you to get started with this UMCAS grant. So UMCAS, you have this grant, you have the community engagement grant, you have the UM Nadi Lembah Pantai grant, and you have the UM Club Sahabat grant. Uh, so you can try to apply for this grant. I am one of the uh, UMCAS fellow here. Uh, this is me looking, uh, uh, this is me in my olden days. La. Now I'm much younger. Okay, so this is me in the olden days. So you can see that this is the grant. Okay, uh, you can try. Uh, there are a lot of descriptions inside there. Uh, one of the things I always like to apply is the UM Club Sahabat. Uh, so you can try. This is Club Sahabat means that program with, schools, uh, program concerning engagement with schools. Uh, so you can try this club sahabat. Now UM Nadi Lamba Pantai is a project like this. Um, you can get, uh, you see, for example, uh, this is under the Lamba Pantai Parliament, uh, where it's headed by uh, the uh, Parliament Minister here. And you can see that they also look at impact projects concerning education, health and well-being, ICT and all this. So if you like, you can apply for this UM Pulse, Nadi Lamba Pantai, and this project is under UMCAS. Uh, so you can uh, get some information from this from UMCAS and you can try to apply for that. Okay, so my, my final thought uh, for all of you is to be curious, yeah? to be curious and to always keep exploring. Uh? So just, just uh, learn from uh, uh, others, you know, we, we, we see what a sort of impact initiative others are doing, be curious and always keep exploring uh, and you will eventually get an idea on your own impact initiative. So at this stage, uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. William, uh, Mr. William uh, to share about what are sort of impact initiatives that is available under Emerald Publishing. Uh, so you all can get an idea uh, about uh, what sort of impact initiatives and, uh, you know, how uh, Emerald Publishing is part of this whole ecosystem of impact initiatives. So I'd like to invite uh, Mr. William, okay, to, to share. Okay, go ahead, uh, Mr. William. Wow. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, uh, right, let me just have a quick check. If my audio is, you know, yeah. I just want to bring up the mic so that it will be nearer to the mouthpiece. Right, allow me to share my screen while well, I'm clicking uh, to select my screen sharing here. I would definitely want to say a big few words uh, to the organizer and also uh, to Dr. Uh, Doni for his great insightful sharing today. I, I, I learned a lot from him, uh, especially the Myra and also the initiative. Um, definitely the posters are all very nice, um, but poster does not mean... Um, 
um, but the effort itself you know means something good morning to all uh, and also samat menyambut ramadan to our muslim friends and colleagues here today i am extremely happy and excited yeah to be part of today's workshop with our great mentor uh, dr donny and i have learned a lot from him i hope that his sharing has also inspired you too I'm William. Uh, probably I've heard my names uh, repeated by Dr. Donny a few times, or probably I've seen it in previous webinar before. Currently, I'm the business manager from Emerald Publishing, uh, based in Subang Jaya SS15 office, which is not too far away. Uh, I'll be sharing the view of impact uh, from the publisher perspective. Uh, it's a short session from me. I do not want to take over the... <laughs> the sharing sessions from uh, Dr. Donny. And I'm uh, also not here to promote about MRO. Uh, my stand here, my uh, sharing here today is to talk about uh, impact itself. Uh, in MRO, we're passionate about uh, driving the real uh, world impact for our authors um, in the way that best suits to their uh, needs. Yeah? So our goal here is to actually help the academic and people in practice, uh, the practitioners, to work together to make a positive change in the uh, real world. So if you look into here, since founded in 1967s and um, along the publishing journey itself, we have more than 200 uh, journals, we have more than 3,000 books, we have more than 2,000 teaching cases available. But um, if, you can, if you have been you know, following Amaro for the past two to three years, probably you'll notice that uh, Amaro have also... Um, uh, pioneering uh, in one of the Emerald Open Research and also DORA. If you do not know what is DORA, DORA, sorry, DORA actually stands for uh, Declaration of Research Assessment. Uh, with signing of DORA uh, as a publisher, we are committed uh, to uphold uh, the research assessments and also uh, the research uh, you know, impact uh, beyond the citations, beyond the downloads counts, because we believe a real world impact makes a difference. That's also why we launched our impact uh, manifesto, our uh, impact literacies, and to offer more resources, more toolkits to help researchers to tell their stories about their research, about their work. Um, impact. Uh, in, in Emerald, we believe that impact should be the core emphasis of your research and impact should start at the beginning uh, uh, of all. Let's let have a look into the process uh, that we are all familiar, which is the publication journey. The publishing uh, journey, the publication journey um, usually looks example like this. Uh, you start with your research, you decide on the publication or type of your research, um, uh, and preferably uh, in Emerald, we, we, we hope that before you start your uh, writing of your manuscript, you should have you know, selected your, your journals, you, have, you already have your target of journalists. Yeah? Or sometimes after uh, your, your research, uh, you have started to write your research. So once you have your manuscript ready, you can submit your research to the publications where it then goes into the peer review process over right here. And if successful, I hope you know, all the best to your manuscript. It will then be published. One published, it's time to disseminate, uh, to, to, to reach out uh, via social media you know, right now. Uh, hopefully, it will create change, uh, also known as the real world uh, impact is actually more beneficial if you consider impact at the very beginning of your research project. Example, in one of Dr. Donny's slides earlier today, uh, what could my research change? And whom could my research benefit, right? As I could, uh, what Dr. Donny uh, mentions uh, this morning itself, uh, impact, this actually describes your ability to understand, appraise, and also make decisions about how your research resonates to the uh, outside world. So this is you know, um, our stance in Amoro and how impact actually means. Yeah? Um, Hi, I'm... 
to, to actually, um, this, this is just a short 39 seconds video by Dr. David Fipp, uh, Phillips and also Dr. Julie Bailey uh, on impact itself. I hope it's audible. If you are not able to hear that, please let me know. Hi, I'm David Phipps. I'm the Executive Director of Research and Innovation Services at York University in Toronto in Canada. Hi, I'm Julie Bailey. I'm the Director of Research Impact Development at the University of Lincoln in the UK. Impact is the provable benefits of research in the real world. So it's some substantiated, some demonstrated effects of our research playing out in the social world. It's not measured by things like citations and academic attention. It's measured by changes, things we can see and feel are new, be they big or small. So right, it's a very short introduction, what is impact. Uh, if you hear that, uh, you know, I hope that you can hear that properly. Uh, uh, as Dr. Julie were saying, right, impact is the provable change of the benefit of the research in the real world itself. So it's not uh, being measured by the citations or not measured by the, you know, the current metrics uh, of uh, the journals, rankings, and so and so. So uh, with an estimated $1 trillion uh, being spent on research uh, annually across the world, so, so probably you, you are doing your research, you also spend money, you get funders to you know, invest into your research. All this uh, research spending is become more important uh, to see the changes in society, right? So, so that the funding body can increase and can also uh, factor in into the grant um, applications. So now what do we actually mean by impact or in our case, research impact? If you have to look at various uh, definitions uh, from the funders and also the assessments, uh, ultimately you can understand that it's actually provable change of uh, all benefits of research in the real world. And being said that all these effects are felt beyond the academic worlds. So, so if you were to see what it means from here, probably you will see what it means by reduce or the improve. Most of our research by our academics, example in COVID-19, COVID-19 research has helped reduce the mortality uh, rate of uh, patients of COVID-19. Um, uh, research on sustainability helped to reduce the waste of um, you know, consumptions, to reduce uh, the waste of uh, plastic usage, so and so, in most of the uh, research, we can see more clearly how it can actually help to improve, improve the effectiveness of teaching and learning via the online teaching during COVID-19. Uh, how does uh, healthy lifestyles, example, right, uh, improve uh, the well-being of um, our community of, of today? So all, all in all, all the research has been done across uh, the year, but how does uh, we can show, we can actually continue uh, the impact of it. Um, over here, uh, can impact, uh, can, can this be sustainable? Uh, very interesting point by Prof Moy, um, sharing earlier, right? When she talked about um, the, the, uh, uh, the activity, the research that being done and the impact and how to sustain, how to keep the research all the impact going on, how to keep the impact further from the implementations of via the train to trainer program, as she mentioned, and also Dr. Donny, I mentioned earlier. And how does this actually sustain? Well, uh, one of the view uh, in Amuro that is you know, unable to shake off or uh, needs to be broken down, uh, which is this invisible wall. Uh, so we believe that there is a wall that probably separates uh, the academics to the societies. Um, re sorry. <laughs> uh, the um, re research that usually conducted uh, under the capa uh, capability of universities and research um, institutions, most of the research uh, that being conducted here will then transform into research paper, which is published in journal or a book uh, which is probably in, you know, mainly books and, and so. Uh, some are even uh, presented in the conference as a conference paper or 
conference proceeding itself. So once a research conductor here, if I can ask everyone in the chat today, who will be reading all this research? So um, um, it will be, you know, again, mainly the researchers or the academics, uh, the peers, and also the students from the same university or the same field. Um, it's, it's usually not easy to deliver uh, research uh, or the impact, yeah, uh, or the message across to the society due to many reasons that we all know about, yeah. Reasons such as technically, technicality of the research, uh, research paper is not something that society can read and understand. And also uh, the, the most um, relevant one, which is the so what factor. So what factor to the society? Uh, the society does not felt, uh, I mean, they do not feel uh, why the research is concerning to them, why the research is actually benefiting to them. So we have done all the surveys, the quantitative, the qualitative, uh, all the methodology, all the research and the findings here. But has the society felt uh, you know, the, 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 the results of the findings or have any of them used uh, the research findings to improve their lifestyles, their corporate management, their policy, the government policy of the day, so and so, so and so. So hence, uh, we hope to break down uh, the invisible wall. We hope to bring the provable uh, effect of research beyond academics to the societies, to the global leaders, to the governments, and to the world itself. Uh, impact often being confused in many, many, many ways. Uh, first of all, um, over here, I would like to also take the opportunity to um, share uh, impact. It is not a dissemination. It is not part of our uh, social media posting. It's not part of our uh, uh, LinkedIn or, you know, uh, of, of what we're telling people that your research uh, is about. Yeah? It's not about the public engagement. It's not about the publications or output that being shared among your circles, among our circles, or it's not you know, presented in any conferences. All in all, you can actually see of this. We, we often, come across to, um, uh, often come across to many advices of using social media as part of the uh, impact of your research. In Emerald, we do not believe that. We believe it is not about promoting uh, your research itself. It is actually more to uh, about the end goal and where does the uh, effect of your research will be felt. Yeah, It's not about social media. It's not about you know, reaching out to them. So at the very beginning, uh, we, we are, like Dodi Dodi have been repeatedly saying uh, earlier ago, um, at the early stage itself, uh, we should know, uh, not we should, but we should be educated enough. We should open our mind to date, right now, to know that uh, uh, we know the problem statements. This is basically chapter one and chapter two of the manuscripts. Yeah, We know the problem, problems itself and about how can we actually frame uh, the problem with the impact. How does that impact basically um, benefit uh, either the society or the government policies, um, uh, the uh, you know, uh, organizations or, or corporate or, uh, institutions, or does your impact or does your research contribute uh, to the SDG? Dr. Donnie has been uh, saying about the 17 SDG earlier and going through. I also want to say thank you. I did not, I changed a lot of my slides. <laughs> today because when I see your presentations uh, on, on those, right, I actually took out some of those and I actually uh, inserted here so that we do not redundant to each other. Some of the ideas that I actually shared, some of the slides that I actually shared earlier, which is the uh, SDG 17 goals, those are something that in MRO, we, um, uh, you know, in our core belief value, we actually believe into that. Hence, uh, we change our goal to uh, resonate to the SDG. Yeah, so identifying the stakeholder, the beneficiaries, and also the co-creation of the uh, research itself. Okay, so who are the stakeholders? Uh, are those the funders? Are those the dean or the you know, school management or the researchers in the university? Or are those the future leader, the young, 
um, you know, young leaders, uh, young generations of today, shall the impact be felt, you know, not just on the corporate level, but also to the young, young uh, researchers, young leaders of the days and things like that. So these are some things food for thoughts here. Uh, because of time issues, uh, just quickly go through some of these um, uh, initiatives. Uh, in, as a publisher, we believe that we need to play um, a crucial role uh, to, to change the mindset. Uh, yes, uh, um, I'm not here to deny the fact that citations, the downloads, general impact factors, uh, the unity rankings, all of these are important. These are undeniable facts and I'm not here to, you know, to, to change that particular uh, facts or the mindset itself. I'm actually here to uh, offer that uh, um, using the research itself, we can also uh, do much more further. Uh, as a publisher, how can we uh, promote uh, real impact? How can we actually promote the research impact? Um, most of times, uh, you and me also find the same challenge. Uh, over here, we would like to use, uh, we, we actually offer uh, incentive. We also offer recognitions. We offer more projects and more webinars to promote and to recognize all this real impact itself. Hence, if you were to go into the Amuro, um website, I mean Amuro corporate website, you'll probably notice that in the past three years, Amuro has been advocating a real impact with awards. And so uh, the aim of the awards and also the category of the award itself, currently there are four category of awards. Um, uh, if you are doing uh, any project or community right now, please feel free to join uh, the uh, competitions. Example, driving the impact, uh, mobilizing research uh, into the actions, uh, the library commitments to uncovering real impact and also interdisciplinary research fund uh, award itself. So these are some of the recognitions we hoped that more people would um, listen, more people would understand what is actually impact means. And, and so uh, in my own, uh, in our Malaysia capacity, in my own capacity, uh, last year, as an example, um, not just in the, even in conference, yeah, even in conference, we, we, we also wanted to uh, create this new, what do you call that? Um, new mm, mindset, um, new, you know, new awareness. Impact is important. So uh, in the last year, uh, which is the Intention Conference of Responsible Tourism and Hospitality, we actually invited Dr. Helen from Amoro. Uh, she, she's, she's, she's with Amoro uh, and she's actually the impact services lead together with the Real Impact winner for the uh, International Interdisciplinary Research Fund and also... Um, another winner for the driving the impact agenda. So both Prof. Alexander and also Prof. Divine, uh, which is here, Professor Divine uh, Kwaku Ahazi, um, talks about how their research can move uh, on even further. Um, we all recognize the challenge to sustain, you know, train the trainer program and, and into that. Uh, we hope that so some of these particular actions, some of these stories, some of the steps that they have been, you know, done could also help us. We can also pick up the learning from them, how to actually sustain uh, in the long run itself. So I think my last slides, which is the uh, impact services. So, so over here, this is a, a, new, uh, a new service uh, from the Emerald itself, where we would like to uh, offer how uh, impact uh, could you know, change um, um, you and your, um, you know, your, your styles and also how can that actually give a meaning to the researchers and also for institutions. So impact culture is important. It's new things, uh, but all these are actually developed by Dr. Bailey and so Dr. Uh, Phipps, yeah, uh, on all these things. And using the impacts itself, you can also help to have your own planner, uh, to pick up new skills on how to, you know, uh, do self-assessments, uh, video infographics. And at the end of it, we hope that it could actually provide a health check, not just for the institutions, but also for researchers. At the end of it, we hope that we are still developing it. Um, we are also uh, 
are aiming to develop more and more reporting formats, demographics formats, so that all the impact health checks can be used as funds uh, to, to apply for funds can be used to, you know, um, uh, as a reporting to the stakeholders, to the funders, to the university management, so and so, so and so. So you can see a very different um, uh, approach from the um, from 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 the citations and from the download itself. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, sorry. This is my last one, which is <laughs> shared also by Doctor Donny. Um, last year, um, uh, me and G. Um, uh, Rosita G, which is a G regional uh, marketing manager, together with uh, our uh, vice president uh, and also regional uh, manager for the East Asia team here, um, we, 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 we give a first, um, a first uh, try on how does... Basically, we, we, we created this award uh, for our region only. The creation of this award is not to you know give to Dr. Donny <laughs> per se, yeah. It's actually not to give uh, out, but it's also help us to understand how us, how does our researcher in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in Taiwan, in Thailand, in Philippines thinks about uh, impact. Very interesting. Each of the uh, submissions that we actually received, I read one. Uh, I, I mean I, I read each of uh, these submissions itself and I found very interesting fact. So it's not a scholar, it's not a paper-driven uh, award. Uh, you know, it's not based on the top download or top cited or you know, top uh, promoter or top in the Facebook and, and things like that. Um, we wanted to use that opportunity to hear, to understand, to listen um, and how, what researchers think about impact. What do you think about impact? How do you use impact in your research? How do you, you know, disseminate impact into your research? Every researcher, every university, and I can also say that every country has very different um, uh, meaning of impact itself. Um, if once you have that, we also want us to recognize, yeah, definitely want to recognize and also to promote the impact-driven research and or, or the efforts that representing impact value. Because we know that uh, most of the research about impact is not going to be highly cited is not going to be highly downloaded. Most of the highly cited or highly downloaded probably you will see will be more on the output itself, a very tangible output, something that could, you know, like in engineering, it could be something very, uh, uh, it could be a hardware or it could be a software that you can field. Uh, in social sciences, probably it will be more on the methodology itself. Normally it will be the most highly cited and so and so. If you're doing, uh, uh, if you're doing impact-driven research, uh, you are not alone. You probably felt a bit uh, this, this discouraged years about it's not going to be the high cited. It's not going to be high downloaded. But fear not. Uh, uh, more and more publisher like Emerald. You see, Emerald are forefronting this. More and more big publishers are also learning uh, with Emerald or learning together with Emerald to recognize and to promote yeah, all this uh, impact itself. So Dr. Donny impact with the society as he have mentioned in the posters and his uh, engagement with the schools, with the teachers from the SK and also SMK. These are something that really needs to be recognized and something that we want to cultivate uh, this mindset among our young researchers among our uh, you know, young generations. And again, I said this is uh, something that we wanted to um, listen more and more from the East Asia. We're going to do more of these things. If you are part, uh, if, if you would like to be you know, part of the teams or would like to share your stories with us, I, I, I welcome you to you know, write to me. Uh, if, you, if you want my, my email, you can always reach out to Dr. Donny. He has my WhatsApp number, my call number, my email address. Just reach out to us and we can see how we could you know, uh, collaborate more and more together. With that, I do not want to waste any more time. It's past uh, five minutes of 12. I, uh, there's actually no, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to uh, put it to the chat or you can also reach out to Dr. Donny. My apology, I took up the time. I pass the floor back to you, Dr. Donny, and also uh, add that. Thank you. Thank you, William, uh, for that sharing. Um, so I think we all got a perspective of uh, what it is like uh, for 
the funder's perspective, from the publisher's perspective, and also um, from uh, you know some sharing from myself this this morning. So um, I'd like to thank um, everyone who is a part of this uh, webinar this morning, and um, you know hope we can uh, collaborate and together make an impact to the society. Yeah? So. Uh, it's very important for us to know what, what it means by research for impact. Huh? Uh, so it's not just citation and uh, journal impacts and all these uh, impact factors and all this. It's uh, beyond academia as what uh, Mr. Williams says, you know, we want to bridge that invisible wall, uh, you know, go from that wall to another. So uh, with that, I thank you everyone. And uh, I surrender back the session to ADEC. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dani. And thank you, Mr. William, for the short sharing in the end. Appreciate it very much. So I'm on behalf of ADEC, would like to thank everyone for joining from morning at 9 a.m. until and uh, now uh, 10 past 12. And we, are, we, we have such good realization about what impact is. Kan? Otherwise, or oh, impact equals citation. Impact equals citation. <laughs> and also the planning that you have uh, shared, Dr. Donny, the, the long-term long insight that you have shared with us in terms of strategizing, in terms of, and I, I would like to point out that I, I am so inspired by your passion. You tak kira. Sebenarnya, you dah, you dah score dah. KPI tu, I dah nampak dah 100 dah KPI tu. Saja je nak tutup kan. <laughs> but I know, I, from the score, we can, we can read Dr. Doni. We are academics. <laughs> but even with that, you you are doing more than what is expected so i think that's a good culture that we all have to embrace you no know, not not keep asking ourselves where does this count where does this count where does this count it you know when when you keep counting you lose the momentum if you keep going your momentum will be there and you just soar higher exponentially so dr don is one good example i'm so honored to have dr don with us to share um, the, the topic on um, research and impact and I hope uh, we can all agree that we have learned so much so with that um, thank you so much Dr. Donny and everyone uh, Mr. William I will see you again next time in our next webinar from ADEC bye um, do you want to take a screenshot screenshot good photo eh? okay, yeah, come. Good photo. let's um, all whoever's around can switch on your camera Give me a minute. Did Dr. Faiz dari UUM. All the way from Utaha. Welcome. 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 If anyone of you uh, not from University of Malaya, please identify yourself. We are honored to have you. I, I hope I can. I wish I can acknowledge each and every one of you for joining. From Victor. Wow. Hi, Prof. Victor. <laughs> My favorite. Ada <laughs> lagi? Okay, I think this is it. Ah, uh, apa kita boleh ambil gambar? Okay, ready everyone. Um, Doctor Aini, I think I cannot see your face properly. I need to undo sikit kamera ni. Ah, uh, kamera turun sikit. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, ready everyone. Okay, one. Two, three. Okay, one more. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Bye. Have a good lunch for those not pausing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Take care. See you, William. Take care. Thank See you, Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much.